Hello, my beautiful, mystical, and spiritual mermaids and soul surfers on the internet, and welcome to Pisces season, and welcome to this March 2023 horoscope for your sign and the collective. Stay tuned. We have a lot of good shit. I am so freaking excited to be doing this horoscope for you guys. Like, holy shit, I took a little break, but we are back. If this is not your first time seeing one of my videos, I would really, really love if you could say hello down below. Let me know that you're back. How have you been? What have you been doing? What's been going on with your life? What is the energy that you feel intuitively for March? Because I would love to know. March is a big mother effing month, okay? Let me tell you, it is not coming to play. It is one of the most busiest months of 2023 and one of the biggest months of 2023 because of these big deal big daddy no bs transits that we have going on in march so stay tuned you're not going to want to miss this so i have decided to do the horoscopes for march for each sign instead of just doing the new moon and full moon horoscopes for march because march is such a big month i don't know if i will stick to this we will see if you like this if you want more comment down below and share this and maybe we will do more who knows never know we are in Pisces season, so the options are limitless, darling. So basically how this video is gonna go is I'm going to talk a little bit about Pisces season for a minute and some of the transits that we have going on this month. And then I'm going to talk about how these different transits are going to show up for your rising sign. Your rising sign will resonate the most, so make sure you are watching your rising sign. So if you'd like to watch the beginning of this video, you can, and I always recommend you do because it gives a full perspective on everything, right? The whole astrology, what's going to happen collectively, themes and patterns that we're going to notice throughout our lives, throughout other people's lives, different keywords we're going to notice coming up, etc., and some of the big changes that we may start seeing in the world and within our lives and other people's lives. And then you get a more focused viewpoint on your individual life when it comes to your ascendant and rising sign. So let's go ahead and get into it. Comment down below if you're excited and let's do this. So we are in the middle of Pisces season. Pisces as a sign is very much about how everything is interconnected. We have Jupiter, a planet of expansion and growth and optimism and beliefs and going beyond boundaries in a very watery internal emotional sign. Therefore, this is showing us how bigger, broader things are interlaced, are interconnected, right? It's an expansion of our emotional and internal worlds. It is an evolution of our emotional and internal worlds, our emotional and internal beliefs, our emotional and internal programming. Pisces is a very mystical sign for this reason because we're taking that limitlessness, that boundlessness of uh, Jupiter and we are blending it with this mutable water sign, right? Where water is just going every which way. So Pisces is very much about transcendence of duality. It is very much about letting go. And these are some of the big things that you'll notice over the next few weeks. You may have already started noticing these things a lot in terms of being in the present moment, you know, letting things go, forgiving, releasing, detoxing, like, you know, just endings, you know, rising above certain situations that have been uh, confrontational for us maybe up until this point, right? It is a very spiritual and a very mystical sign as well. So we're really diving into the unknown, the emotional waters of Pisces that can really help us evolve and grow spiritually and let go of whatever needs to be let go of. So the reason that this particular March is such a big freaking deal is because we literally have some of the biggest transits of 2023 happening this month in March, okay? Now, one of the biggest things that is going to be happening is that Saturn is going to enter Pisces, right? So Saturn is very structured. It's very much about structure, groundedness, responsibility, things like that. And it's going to be entering the dreamy, watery, mystical, imaginative sign of Pisces. So it's for me, what I really think this is about and going to be about for a lot of us and a lot of you know what we're going to see in our lives is that we're going to be adding a lot of structure and getting very serious and very accountable and very responsible for our own dreams right where we want to go um our in the internal work that we need to do self-development right empathy right like it's gonna be like taking personal responsibility 
for some of these things in our lives and getting very real and getting very structured around where we need to start implementing some of the things that we know are going to help us and free us and uplift us and inspire us and help us forgive and let go, you know, where do we need to start implementing practices that are going to bring this into our reality, into our everyday life? I really kind of think like overall, just to give you a general gist, I think overall that is what Saturn and Pisces is going to be about. I also talked a little bit more about Saturn and Pisces in my 2023 predictions video uh, if you want to go watch that and hear more but I really think it's going to be kind of grounding the unimaginable into reality grounding you know what is actually important in terms of letting go forgiving in terms of our spiritual and emotional evolution and grounding that into the physical plane right so and that can go to so many lengths, right? You can you can look at that through so many different lenses because that could be, you know, um, new, you know, apps coming out that are like, you know, like virtual reality, you know, that's a very Pisces and uh, Saturn and Pisces kind of thing. Um, you can look at that through, you know, artists and creatives creating something and bringing that into reality and giving it a structure, giving it a form. It's kind of like giving a form to our imagination, giving a physical form to the unimaginable, right? And so we're really going to be focused on that with Saturn and Pisces and getting very serious and structured about some of these other worldly things or some of these things involving emotional work, forgiveness, internal work, etc. Uh, my cat is in front of the light right now, but so we're going to definitely be structuring our flow, our artistic flow, our creative flow, our imagination flow, right? Like all of these different things, our healing flow, right? So all of these things we're going to start structuring. So with that being said, another big thing that we have happening in March, which isn't like super huge for the year, but is huge in terms of just March as a month is we have a Virgo full moon happening on that same day uh, on the 7th that Saturn enters Pisces. And so this as well is going to be so this Virgo full moon happening as uh, like on the same day as Saturn enters Pisces really definitely does tell me as well that we are adding a structure and a sense of groundedness, a sense of practicality to what we imagine, what we desire in terms of our spiritual evolutions, um, our emotional evolution, what we desire that's going to be fulfilling to the soul, um, what we desire in terms of our creativeness, our imaginations, um, our spirituality, uh, our sense of humanness versus our sense of divinity on this planet. And so I feel like that's also another very strong indicator of this. The other really interesting thing happening for the month of March is that we have Jupiter, again, the planet of expansion and optimism and growth and our beliefs and our morality conjunct to the planet of Chiron in Aries. And so this is really going to show us where certain wounds, it's going to broadcast our wounds and broadcast other people's wounds in terms of what needs to be healed in some way. It's going to show us where we need to rise above old wounds or beliefs or insecurities about ourselves and rise above certain limitations in terms of how we are motivated, in terms of trying to prove ourselves in some area and really kind of grow beyond that, right? Like how can we heal that? How can we look at it in a new way? It's going to give us a lot of optimism and a time of a lot of healing and moving beyond something that has hurt us or wounded us. And so I'm really excited for that transit happening exact on the 12th, but we're really going to be feeling it these first couple weeks of Pisces or of March anyway. So the middle of the month shit gets weird, okay? Shit gets a little cray cray because we're going to have Mars squaring Neptune again. Mars and Gemini squaring Neptune and Pisces, which is going to make for an absolute shit show. Things are going to be confusing. Things are not going to be necessarily what they seem. It's going to be very uh, troublesome to, it's going to be very challenging to really see the facts clearly through a lot of fogginess and delusion that is going on. Like Mars and Gemini squaring Neptune and Pisces is literally like, you know, being on an LSD trip and trying to like write down all the facts at the same time, like trying to understand what's factual and what's not, you know, like, and so, you know, Mars 
and Gemini squaring. This is not the first time it's squared Neptune in these last few months through its transit through Gemini. Um, it's squared Neptune quite a few times. So it's really been testing our faith, testing our beliefs with other evidence, um, with certain facts and stories that we've been telling ourselves and certain maybe other people's opinions. Like, can you believe when the circumstances or the facts aren't quite adding up to this belief that you have or this faith that you have or this optimism that you have? Like, can you still believe beyond what your physical reality is telling you or what the facts are telling you or what other people are telling you or other people's opinions, you know? Like, can you still believe through that? And so this may be a little bit of the tension that we revisit that comes up for the last time. Uh, around the middle of March. So probably from like the 12th to the 15th or so, we're really gonna be feeling that energy. And then on top of that, from the 15th to around like the 17th, we're going to have a beautiful conjunction between the Sun, Mercury, and Neptune. So it's like through that tension, like a new found faith is born, like a new beginning is born, a new belief is born. Like we start really making sense of things on a massive scale, on a very optimistic and faith-oriented scale, like a very mystical, spiritual, otherworldly, divine, magical scale. So from the 15th to the 17th, I do really like that. It's kind of this like magical moment that comes in that we're like, Oh, where we are not only like believing in something, we are embodying it, right? With this sun there, it's like we are embodying it, we are expressing it, like we are the belief, right? Like we become the embodiment of something that we've been taught through the lens of this Neptune energy of spirituality and mysticism and divinity and magic and, you know, seeing something at a higher interconnected level that allows us to really make sense of something with Mercury there and also embody it. It's like a download or, I mean, this is going to be amazing for channeling. This is going to be amazing for so many different things. Like I'm really looking forward to this. So uh, it's going to be a very otherworldly, mystical, woo-woo kind of time where we're having like a lot of synchronicities, a lot of realities are intersecting, you know, like it's it's going to be a really mystical time from the 15th to the 17th. So do be excited for that. But then right around that time, we are also going to have Venus and Aries squaring Pluto and Capricorn. So this can bring up some conflict, some tension, some really intense conflict and tension that we're kind of attracted to, but we also feel like we shouldn't be, right? Like on a practical level, we're like, no, this could really destroy a lot of things, but we're kind of drawn to like the the confrontation of it, the tension of it, like there's something magnetizing about that. And so we could kind of get drawn into some things that like we know aren't good for us or some tense uh, conflicts or challenges that feel a little bit um, toxic or like not quite great in some way or that we have kind of like a bad feeling about. But either way, there's going to be a challenge there that really allows us to learn more about ourselves and asserting ourselves through whatever this challenge is that comes up around the 16th and 17th. We have an Aries new moon on the 21st, which I will do a separate video on. Um, and then the 23rd is the other really big transit that we have of 2023, which is Pluto entering into Aquarius for the first time. Okay. For the first time since like the late 1700s. Okay. So this is a really big deal. Um, and it's going to be a glimpse for a few months of what's to come with Pluto and Aquarius. I also talked more about this in my 2023 predictions video where I kind of just chilled in my makeup and talked about some of my thoughts. I didn't do a bunch of research on these transits like I have in previous years um, just because, I don't know, I just wasn't feeling it. I wanted to just kind of sit down and talk about what I thought just right off the bat about some of these transits, but uh, there's a lot of excellent videos out there if you'd like to watch. Um, and learn more about Pluto and Aquarius. I'm gonna talk about it some, but yeah, it's just, there's a lot of different ways it could go. And, um, you know, like we're just gonna have to see, but it's definitely gonna involve technology. You know, um, it's gonna involve society, anything social. <laughs> it's going to involve uh, people, the people, groups of people, technology, science, you know, all of those things we're going to see major revolutionary changes in and major fo a major focus on for the next, you know, several years and decades that Pluto will enter Aquarius. So on the 25th, we will finally have Mars moving into Cancer and out of Gemini. It's been in Gemini since literally last summer. Okay, we've had a long Mars and Gemini transit, but that is 
finally changing, Mars is going to move into Cancer. Mars does not like to be in Cancer though. Um, that is the, the issue here. Mars does not like to be in Cancer. So it will feel good in some ways because it'll feel like a shift, but uh, Mars does not like to be in Cancer. So there can be some issues there, you know, where we start seeing more conflict or turbulence or challenges or stress involving cancer themes so family emotions emotional bonds what's familiar but what i do like about this is it's going to make trines to saturn and pisces and then eventually neptune and pisces so it's going to resolve i think some of that mars and gemini you know is the issues that we had with mars and gemini where it was squaring all the planets in pisces and so i feel like it's definitely going to be a time where we're going to be feeling more more introverted where we're going to be feeling like we're going to want to go within more we're going to be more focused on security emotional security you know the 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 people in our lives that we have close emotional bonds to that we feel safe and secure with and so i am looking forward to that aspect of it then towards the very end of the month we have venus conjunct uranus so the very end of the month is like you know some major awakening vibes um some major setting a new standard in terms of beauty fashion what we feel pleasure with, you know, what feels good to us, relationships, money. And so we're really going to be like awakening and having new ideas here and wanting to like set a different bar for ourselves in that regard. So anyway, so those are the, the big transits for March. Two of them are really stick out to me, which is Saturn and Pisces and then Pluto moving into Aquarius. Again, I did talk a little bit more about that in my 2023 predictions video. And then I also went really in depth about these two transits as well in my 2023 predictions for your rising sign. So it's like your 2023 horoscope for your rising sign video. So if you have not watched that, go watch that if you would like more in depth information on what some of these bigger yearly transits are gonna mean for your rising sign. So anyway, so let's go ahead and get into your horoscope for March, 2023. Alrighty, Pisces, starting with you, darlings. March is a big deal for you, Pisces. Like, not only is this your month, right? Like, it's Pisces season, but there are so many rebirths happening this month that, like, you may walk out of this month and feel like, whoa, what the hell just happened to me? Like, it could rock your world, essentially, right? Because there are really long-term cycles that are starting this month for you. If you're a Pisces rising, even if you're a Pisces sun or a Pisces moon or just have prominent place placements in Pisces, but this particular horoscope is going to relate mostly to you a little bit more if you're a Pisces rising, so do keep that in mind. But so the big thing I want to start with is like the first few days of March are going to feel like really magical and like there's a lot of opportunity, there's a lot of inspiration, there's a lot of optimism or like there's good things kind of coming to you that also help you and maybe help you heal something or maybe help you like let go of some insecurities or limitations or something like that, especially in terms of money and finances and your individuality and your own individual needs and resources. So that could definitely be something that you see those first few days of March. But then we get into more of a serious energy as well because Mercury is going to conjunct Saturn in your sign, or not in your sign, sorry, in your 12th house. <laughs> Don't know where I was for a minute, but in your 12th house, which is going to lead to maybe you really kind of seeing or getting very solid and clear on where you need to structure some areas of your life a little bit more, especially behind the scenes to be able to let something go, to be able to end something. This could be like having a difficult conversation. Um, it could deal with something to do with your family or something to do with relationships, but it's like something needs to end here. It's like a boundary needs to be set, accountability needs to be taken. And so that could also be something that happens within like the first few days of March for you. So then, then on the seventh, we have the big dog transit of March, which is Saturn, Big Daddy Saturn, moving into your sign, Pisces. And this is a big deal. You know, Saturn is the planet of restrictions, accountability, responsibility, you know, long-term commitments, long-term cycles, and dealing with things that can be difficult at times, but it's also very much about maturing and growing up and doing what feels right, doing what's going to get you further in the long run or be better for you in the long run. 
instead of short-term gratification, okay? And so Saturn moving into your sign this month is going to be the start of like the next three-year cycle where you are going to be a lot more structured, getting a lot more serious in terms of who you are, your place in the world, what you came here to do, how you express yourself, your personality. It could be a time of growing up, maturing, you know, and just really kind of feeling like, oh, I can't get away with doing the same things that I used to do anymore. So this could also be a time where you are changing your style or changing how you go about things, changing how you express yourself, changing how you, you know, uh, create things in the world, changing who you are as a person to like feel like you are more mature, you know, like knowing and getting very structured about who you are and being more responsible and accountable. Now, this is not something that's gonna happen just the start of this month. Like, this is a long-term transit. So these are themes you're gonna notice over the next few years where you're getting a lot more serious about who you are and your place in the world and your identity and your personality and how you express those things to other people in your life, right? And so that is going to start though this month. So just be kind of on aware of that. So the other transit that I wanna talk about for you Pisces is on the 12th, we will have Jupiter joining Chiron exact in your second house. So this is definitely gonna be a time where you are expanding past maybe old limiting beliefs that came from you know, wounds or uh, insecurities or just old situations in your life that were traumatic or that wounded you in some way. It's like you're growing past those things, especially in terms of what you have to offer in this world, your skills, your talents, you know, your resources, potentially money and income, your value as a human being, you know, it's like you are rising beyond old stories that you used to tell yourself uh, about certain, you know, because of certain things that happened in your past due to wounding, you know, when you were maybe a child or certain insecurities that you've developed from childhood because of certain things that you experience. It's like Jupiter conjunct Chiron is kind of unlocking a lot of healing for you in this area this month. And so I'm really excited to see how that turns out for you. So definitely make sure to let me know down below. So the other big thing that we have happening with this is that um, this month around, you know, the middle of the month from like the 12th to 14th, Mars is going to square Neptune. So um, Mars in your fourth house is going to square Neptune in your first house. So you've already kind of had this struggle off and on over like the last six months or so, maybe even longer actually now that I think about it with Mars moving through Gemini. But there's been kind of this tension or conflict occasionally that you may have noticed over the last several months on and off between you know, your family and home life versus who you are and your personality and your, you know, your boundaries and what you want to do. Like, you know, Neptune and your sign is like making you a lot more free flowing, making you a lot more connected to other things, you know, like you just have this interconnectedness, right? Or you, you know, want to do a lot of different things or you don't have, you know, like clear structure in your life. And so Mars in your fourth house has possibly been bringing up a lot of tension and stress and you know conflict in terms of family and home life and your personal life, your private life, your personal situations, or even your past. And it's been kind of challenging for you because maybe there's been something about it that's been confusing or maybe you've been kind of neglecting it or trying to escape it or trying not to face it head on. And so this is the last time this is gonna happen where you know Mars is gonna square Neptune um, in, in your sign. And so this may be a time where it's like, you can't escape it, you can't run from it anymore, you can't keep just you know blurring it out. You're gonna have to kind of face it or you're gonna have to forgive something or accept something or feel something, you know? And so that could happen like mid-month for you, especially in terms of your home life, your family life and personal life past and things like that. So then we do have a more positive transit happening like right after that with the Sun, Mercury and Neptune from like the 15th to the 17th are all gonna be conjunct in your sign. So this is like a major aha wake up moment. It's like an evolution. It's like if you really face that difficulty or that conflict in your family and home life, it's like you come to this realization, you come to this like newfound awareness and embodiment within yourself that 
really has you feeling like a lot of faith, a lot of inspiration, a lot of love for yourself. Like you feel like maybe it's like a purification moment even. Like you're feeling very connected. You're feeling very connected to something higher than yourself even. And just very, you know, like in this space of like being very aware of, you know, certain things that are just clicking and like maybe bringing in even like epiphanies and downloads or even like channeling information that is just really, really having you see things from like a whole new light. So with that though, <laughs> right around this time as well, from like the 15th to the 17th, Venus is going to also square Pluto. So Venus is going to be in your second house, squaring Pluto in your 11th house you know, which isn't too crazy of a place to have this transit though, but still there could be some tension or conflict that arises, you know, like where you really start realizing I need to separate myself and I want to do something for myself and my own individual needs. And that may mean like cutting ties from certain people, certain groups, certain organizations, certain institutions, certain you know, business partnerships, certain friends, you know, just certain influences or companies or whatever. It's like there's something here that you're kind of trying to separate ties from or that you're having a struggle with or a potential conflict with, especially in terms of, you know, finances or value or, you know, maybe you're not feeling like treated right in the corporation that you work for, the company that you work for, the people that are involved in some kind of project or something in your life. And you're like, you know, I can't keep doing this. It's like, I have to like do me or I have to worry about me. And again, this is like facing certain areas of conflict in your life where you haven't been quite in your power. And so I really think that that's what's going to, that this is what's going to be happening, that this is what's that's going to be about basically, because a couple of days after that, we have the Aries new moon in your second house, which is kind of like this time of like, standing in your bravery, standing in your assertiveness, standing in your individuality, like, you know, doing things and taking confident action, being very direct, you know? And so it's like, there's this period of like indirect, like being indirect and trying to like, you know, just kind of glaze over issues that need to be resolved, that need to be faced, that need to be worked through. And then there's this period of like, I can handle shit, you know, because I, I faced these issues. I like stopped trying to, you know, tiptoe around and I like finally faced this, right? So I really love that. And then on the 23rd, we're going to have Pluto, again, the planet of destruction and transformation, moving into the sign of Aquarius, your 12th house sector. Um, so this is definitely going to give you a taste for a couple of months. It doesn't mean something is going to happen right on that day. It's going to take some time to build, but you could notice more of a shift around that time to more of a focus on your internal realm, on things going on behind the scenes, on letting things go, on seeing that maybe not everybody has your best interest at heart. And this is so much why you have to trust yourself. Like I feel like this, this month, Pisces is so much about self-trust for you. Like that's a beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> that's the word I'm looking for. It's a beautiful way to put it. It's so much about self-trust, trusting in yourself and not getting too triggered by other people's shit. Like, and being able to like forgive, you know, being able to forgive and not let it pull you out of your own state of bliss, your own state of harmony, you know, like make it question, like not let it like make you question yourself, you know, but also face things in a direct manner and not be afraid to, right? Like you can face things and have boundaries and, you know, be assertive and direct um, still and still do that in a loving way and an em empathetic way, right? Like, so I really feel like those are some of the big lessons you're kind of coming through this month. But anyway, so on the 25th, Mars is going to finally leave Gemini, your fourth house, and enter into your fifth house of Cancer. And so the, all that conflict and stress and, you know, turbulence in your family, home, and personal life is finally going to start dissipating. And there's going to be a lot more of a drive and focus towards your passions, what you love, what brings you a sense of joy, what makes your heart feel joyful in life. And for some of you, that could be family, children, um, you know, helping and taking care of other people, you know, really connecting to your heart space, 
um, your nurturing energy. It's like you're, you're, you start focusing a lot more on nurturing the things that you love and giving life to those things, right? And putting your actions and your intentions and your energy towards that um, after the 25th for a couple months. So watch out for that. And then at the very end of the month, we have some interesting energy. Mercury will be then conjunct Jupiter in your second. So you'll be getting major downloads, epiphanies, realizations in terms of, again, your finances, resources, what you have to add of value, your skill set, um, what you have to offer. So these could be like really great ideas, inspirational ideas that are coming in that are pushing you into a certain direction or conversations that you're having that really feel like, yes, like I can do this. I got this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to go big or go home kind of energy and really like coming up with like a plan of action for the things that you want to build, like these, these inspirational ideas, right? And then after that, the very end of the month as well, you know, this is all from like the 28th to the 31st, we're going to have Venus conjunct Uranus in Taurus. And this is your third house. So again, like really creative, beautiful energy coming in here. This could be, you know, ideas about writing something or short trips or certain influences or people like, you know, and just really kind of revolutionary creative ideas coming in here. I just really love this energy for you. And so, um, yeah, that is what I am seeing this month for you, Pisces. Let me know down below if any of this sounds like it's going to resonate. Um, if you could see a lot of this happening, happy birthday if you are a Pisces sun. And we are going to move on to the next sign. Alrighty, my lovely Aries. Welcome to your March 2023 horoscope. So, the first few days of March for you, if you are an Aries rising, um, are very interesting because we have some really positive transits happening in your sign. So we have Venus and Jupiter coming into their conjunction, which is also pretty much conjunct Chiron in your sign. So this is like growing beyond your insecurities or old wounds. It's kind of like seeing beyond your own wounds, you know, like where you've been maybe feeling insecure or wounded for a little bit. And it's like finally like you're seeing more possibilities, like you're seeing beyond that. It's like you're becoming unstuck from some of the old shit in your life and it's feeling very pleasurable, it's feeling very inspiring, it's feeling very optimistic and it's like, wow, maybe I can move past this, like maybe I can finally get on the other side of this. But it may also involve having some reality check moments as well in terms of the people that you surround yourself with your friend groups, the people that you share interests with, you know, things like that, what you're, the kinds of people that you're like really attracting in the world. And so that's kind of the only thing with this. It's like, you may have to make some decisions. You may have to give some news. You may have to give some announcements. You may have to set some boundaries. You may have to like make some hard decisions or choices that add an extra layer of like heaviness or difficulty on top of that, but it's like needed, right? It's like, I have to do this for me or I have to step into like my own energy and my own feelings, like my own sense of success and my own sense of desire to like really do this. And I can't do that if I continue to, you know, surround myself with certain kinds of people or whatever, right? It's like, I really feel like this is kind of like a time areas where you're really reflecting on your environments and the people in your life, the people you surround yourself with. And I know for me, like a lot of the people that I kind of learn from or listen to or follow or like take courses or programs from for like self-development or whatever, like one of the biggest things that they say, one of the biggest things that people say that are more successful is that they really started surrounding themselves with people that like really embodied like the goal that they wanted to achieve right or embodied the energy that they wanted to calibrate to right kind of reminds me of like calibration like calibrating yourself to like the energy of people that you want to be around right like if you're around a bunch of people that are just partying all the time smoking and not doing anything with their lives and just complaining super negative all the time like you are going to calibrate to that energy like whether you like it or not like you can try to stand firm and try to stand strong and try to like keep doing you but if you're constantly surrounded with people like that then you're just gonna fall right back into that mix right and so it's like you're really starting to get very decisive and clear and choosing who you want to sit at your table instead of just like letting everybody else decide for you right like that's kind of what i see here with this energy so the other big thing that we have happening in march is on the 7th we have saturn moving into the sign of pisces which is your 12th house so not only that but you're also going to start for the next three years getting very, very serious starting in March and start having a lot of things come up 
in terms of you getting a lot more structured in terms of your healing, in terms of what you need to let go of, in terms of forgiveness, in terms of releasing, detoxing, you know, letting go of whatever shit you need to let go of. It's like Saturn and Pisces in your 12th. Saturn loves being in the 12th house. So this is going to be a time that's going to really make you responsible and accountable of going within and adding some kind of like healing practice or healing structure, like adding, like really bringing your subconscious to reality, right? It's like really bringing out subconscious things for you to face and work through of where you're not owning up to something or you're not taking accountability or some, for something or you have some kind of guilt, shame, remorse that's been weighing you down subconsciously or in your energy. It's gonna like really kind of structure your life in this way so you are working through some of these like energetic blockages, subconscious blockages, you know, things that are blocking you in terms of your healing, in terms of letting go and all of that right? It's going to be, get, it's going to be a serious time where if you're not healing, if you're not feeling, if you are not facing things that you've been running from or escaping from, this is going to be an energy that's going to kind of confront you over the next three years. Now, it's not all going to happen this month. It, this is a slower moving energy. So it's not something you have to like, you know, freak out about or anything like this. You're going to be learning these lessons for like the next two and a half years or so. But just a heads up, this is going to be a time where you're going to be confronting some things from your past or confronting some old, you know, maybe self-sabotaging traits or confronting things that you need to let go of or confronting difficulty in your life that maybe you've been, you know, like escaping for a little bit that it's like time for you to face, right? And it's not all going to happen at once. It's just going to be something that you're going to notice, like a pattern that you're going to start noticing a theme in your life that's going to start coming up over these next few years that's going to really have you facing like what's within you, what's inside of you, what's what's going on with you, right? And so what's going on behind the scenes? Like, you know, do you need to restructure your sleep schedule? Do you need to get into more spiritual pursuits? Do you need to travel? Do you need to get away? You could start feeling a little bit more distant, a little bit more secluded while you're working through like certain things involving your energy. Um, if you have certain like health related things coming up, it's likely going to be something that is more energetic. Um, or that you can see like a holistic doctor for, or, you know, like it's going to kind of push you to get into different forms of healing, different forms of spirituality and self-improvement, self-development, um, hypnosis, even like things like this would be great around this time over the next couple of years. So just kind of keep that in mind. And so with that being said, the other, uh, another big thing I wanted to talk about for the month of March, Aries, is that um, we're also going to have Mars, your ruling planet, in the middle of the month, causing a little bit of turbulence, causing a little bit of trouble and conflict. <laughs> so from like the 12th to the 14th, Mars is going to be in Gemini in your third house, squaring Neptune uh, in your 12th house in Pisces. So this could bring in a lot of confusion in terms of, you know, like Saturn just moved into your 12th. So there is this heavy focus on your 12th house of kind of secluding yourself, getting away, working on you, letting go, releasing, forgiving, all of that, you know, like looking and really seeing and awakening to where you have certain self-sabotaging behaviors or self-defeating behaviors or certain things that you're doing that are causing you to go into like a self-undoing thing or just you're focused on healing in general, like getting away from your normal day-to-day -day life and reality and just kind of like learning to trust, learning to let go, learning to have faith, you know, but <laughs> Mars in your third house in Gemini is like, oh, well, um, you have these errands or you have these appointments or you have to do this or you're just like you're feeling like you're constantly busy and so you can't find the time or there's something that is challenging you um, that's making you kind of feel like you can't just let go, like you can't just relax, you can't just lean back, you can't just do your own thing because you have, you know, something in your day-to-day -day reality, something in your day-to-day -day circumstances um, that is kind of taking a lot of your energy, right? And so this could definitely be a time where you're feeling a little bit confused, like how do I address this or whatever? And it may feel like, oh, I just want to escape this. Or how can I have faith? How can I continue to have trust and hope when this is happening? You know, like when my reality or my circumstances are saying something completely different. And this is like a time where you have to remember your own power, okay? Like where you have to remember that you are the one in charge here. Your circumstances do not own you. You own your circumstances, right? You are the one responsible here. You are the one in power here. You are the one accountable here, right? And so, yes, certain things can happen that are out of your control, but you have more control than you think you do.
So you can't like just run from it or escape it or try to ignore it or block it out. Like if you do that, it's gonna get so much worse. And this is a lesson that's already been building for several months anyway. And so it's gonna be like a time where it's like you may have to confront something um, that is blocking you or you may have to let something go that's taking up a lot of your energy in order for you to do this healing or you may have to face something in your environment or with your circumstances or in your day-to-day -day life um, that is hard, you know, but that's taking a lot of your energy or that's making you feel depleted or exhausted or whatever. And so that is really what I see here for you, like middle of the month. But then right after that, from like the 15th to the 17th, we have this beautiful energy of the sun, Mercury and Neptune coming into their conjunction in Pisces in your 12th. So it's like that leads to this sense of freedom and limitlessness and healing and awareness and even like an awakening of sorts or a revelation of sorts, like a massive awareness of holy shit like i feel clear or i feel clean now or i feel so much more like myself now or things are like making sense it's like this download comes through right where it's like oh like i see why i needed to do that but right around the same time we're also going to have venus in your sign aries squaring pluto and capricorn and so again this is like what are you giving your power away to what are you thinking that you need or that you have to do? Like, what are you giving power to in your life that is not directly helping you or improving you in some way, right? So this could bring up some kind of intense power struggle in terms of you versus your career or an authority figure or the direction in your life or your path. And so again, it's like you becoming very aware of like where you may need to confront something or face something or face certain fears where you've been giving your power away and power struggles in your life. And so that's kind of going on the middle of the month. But then we have on the 21st, the new moon in your sign, which is going to kind of start this new beginning. You know, it's like this fresh start and things are going to start getting more positive from there because then we're going to have Mars finally leaving Gemini, finally leaving your third house where you've been learning all about your environment, your circumstances, your day-to-day -day life. There's been a lot of energy and focus on what's going on right here, right now in your day-to-day -day life. And um, also, you know, how you communicate, how you speak, uh, the people, places, and things that you're surrounding yourself with, your different environments and things like that. But Mars is finally moving out of Gemini and moving into Cancer on March 25th. Now, this is good because it's finally going to be like a shift, a change. But Mars also doesn't like to be in Cancer and Mars is your ruling planet. So you are going to get a lot more focused on your home life, your personal life, your family. So, you know, March is a month of like kind of finishing up a lot of things, but also you going inward a lot more, like you really getting a lot more maybe introverted, um, learning more about yourself, growing past old wounds, like even old childhood shit, like healing and going within and then there's going to be a large focus after the 25th on even more of your internal world your internal emotions where you feel safe and secure your foundation your family your personal life your past like you know there's going to be changes that begin to happen in terms of those areas of life in terms of your family and your home life and it's going to be like okay what do i need to nurture in my personal life and my private life um that's going to make me feel better about who i am and that could come with some struggle or stress at first but um or at least you know eventually but you're really going to be focused on that like you're really going to be putting more of your energy towards like having a solid emotional foundation within yourself and working through any you know undercover emotions that are just not really feeding you anymore right and so then um at the very end of the month from like the 28th to the 31st we're gonna have mercury conjunct jupiter in your sign again bringing all this optimism and a lot of really cool revelations and you like you getting very particular about the big plans that you have and the big things you want to do and you know the inspirations that you have and then venus is going to conjunct uranus in your second house in taurus so this is also getting uh very excited and maybe changing something up the very end of the month in terms of money and finances and you know having certain breakthroughs and shifts in terms of you know and and maybe doing something to liberate yourself in terms of finances resources income your priorities what you need things like that 
Um, and so, yeah, that is what I'm really seeing this month for you, Aries. If you're an Aries rising, comment down below. Let me know if this is. These are definitely things that you could see coming up this month in March, how you're feeling already with March. I'd love to hear your feedback. Thank you guys so, so much for watching, and we are going to move on to the next sign. The Taurians, and welcome to your horoscope for March 2023. So the first part of March for you, Taurus, is really beautiful as we have the two benefic planets of Venus, your ruling planet, with Jupiter and also very, very close to Chiron, technically conjunct Chiron as, as well in Aries. And so this is going to be a really beautiful, expansive time of like, I feel like overcoming old wounds, overcoming old insecurities, overcoming old sense, like an old sense of self or an old sense of identity that you're kind of releasing and letting go of like old ways in which you've maybe gone against yourself or, you know, self-sabotaged or escaped or whatever. It's like, you're no longer doing that. And it's like, you're rising above something. Like you're really, um, reconciling an old part of you or forgiving yourself or letting something go. And it's like this really beautiful opportunity to finally heal something like that first week of the month. So I really, really love that. While also, we also have this energy of Mercury coming into its conjunction with Saturn and Aquarius, which is your 10th house. So with all of that beautiful energy that's happening where you're like coming back in touch with who you are and, you know, maybe releasing um, you know, old, an old part of you or forgiving an old part of you or like, like, you know, healing or mending, you know, something like an old insecurity or an old wound. We also have this really beautiful energy of you getting very, very clear, concise and decisive about something happening in terms of your future, your career, like you are making a plan and getting very serious about it, or you are finally owning up to something or taking accountability or setting some boundaries uh, in terms of where you want to go in your life, your goals, your plans, your career, your future, authority figures, etc in that very first week of March. So I also really like that for you too, Taurus. Then we also have on the 7th, the really big transit of the month, which is Saturn moving into Pisces. And so this is basically happening in your 11th house. And so this is going to be a time where you start getting a lot more serious and structured in terms of your goals, your aspirations, but also the people that you're letting sit at the table with you, right? Like this is the people that you want in your life, the friend groups, the like-minded people, the acquaintances, the different kinds of people that you want in your life, an audience that you have or different people that you want to market to or whatever, like these different kinds of things, like the kind of social environments that you want to have and that you're kind of speaking to, right? And so you're kind of like getting more structured about your dreams and like how to make them a reality and the kind of people that you need to network with to do that over the next like two and a half to three years as Saturn travels through the sign of Pisces. So this is a long-term transit. You may not notice it right away in March, um, but you are going to notice these patterns over time. So that's something else that is happening for you that is a really big deal. It's like you've been so focused on your purpose, your goals, your career, getting very serious about these things and having to deal with possibly a lot of difficulty in these areas over the last several years. But now it's like going to shift into where, okay, it's like you've, you've built things, right? Like you've really had to build things. You've had to work hard. You've had to get serious. You've had to do things the right way and be very responsible and grow up and mature in terms of your life, in terms of your goals, in terms of career, in terms of authority figures. But you're also now having to do all that in terms of the people, acquaintances, and networking in your life, right? Your, your long-term dreams, right? So that's something that's really going to start this month. That's also a really big deal. So the middle of the month gets a little bit wonky, so to say, because we were going to have our last and final Mars square Neptune transit. So Mars is in your third, or I'm sorry, your second house of finances, resources, your income, what supports you, your priorities. So you've had to learn a lot of lessons here. You've had to put a lot of energy here. There's been a lot of shifty back and forth energy here. And now it's going to square Neptune for the final time, which is also in your 11th house. And so there's kind of an energy here, of like who can you trust? You know, like what people in your life can you really truly trust? Um, are they telling you the truth? Are you putting too much faith in something? Do you need to be more logical and factual about something going on or certain people in your life? Like, you know, this could be a time where you've maybe started relying a lot more on 
film or media or networking or marketing or advertising or something like that for some of you um, in terms of maybe a business that you're trying to grow or finances in some way, right? Or designing something or doing something creative that you're trying to get out there to other people. Um, but, and it's like a dream that you've been following or that you've had, but Mars in your second has been really challenging this. Like, okay, well, is this actually financially doable? Is this actually logical? Is this creating the kind of environment financially that I want? You know, is this bringing in the income or the resources or whatever the case may be? Like, do I actually value this? You know, what what's going on with your priorities? You know, you've had to really reflect on these things over the last several months. And so this is the final square. So it's kind of this final test to see like what you've learned the last few months. So just remember that like right around the 13th to like the 15th, if you're noticing uh, you know, some confusion or some challenge, this could be what it has to do with, right? Like, do you need to trust in something more or do you need to be more factual about something? Or is there a way that you can do both? Is there a way that you can, you know, um, you know, like be more discerning in terms of the people in your life that you're letting in and how that somehow impacts your priorities, your finances, your value, things like this. Like, or, or do you feel like you're really worth what you're putting out? Or do you feel like the response you're getting is really worth what you're doing? You know, like things like this, like questions like this could arise, right? Like looking at the, the details and the data of things versus looking at the, the bigger picture and the faith and the optimism and the dream behind things and how much you can really trust the connections that you're making and these different you know potential friendships or alliances etc collaborations that you're making in your life and so that is definitely something that could come up especially when it comes to is it taking something from you or taking something out of your pocket to do these things, right? So let me know if that relates down below. I'd love to know what you guys are noticing with that. But other than that, from the 15th to the 17th, we have a really beautiful conjunction happening between the Sun, Mercury, and Neptune. So this is really gonna shine a light on major like downloads, major awareness, major revelations, and potentially even awakenings that are kind of coming in to do with where this is at in your chart, which again, this is your 11th house again, other people, acquaintances, allies, collaborations, networking, marketing, you know, your dreams, your aspirations, your hopes, your wishes, like, so it's like you're finally getting clear. It's like after that little turbulence with this area, it's like now you're clear on what you do want and the kinds of people that you do want in your life or that you do want to speak to or market to or deal with or the kinds of hopes that you really do want, the kinds of dreams that you really do have. It's like there's a, a clarity that is coming in here, very crystal clear clarity and awareness that is coming in from the 15th to the 17th on what you actually desire, what you actually want and what you're actually going to do in this area of your life and moving forward. It's like the dream is seen, you know, it's like you have awareness of the vision. There's, there's a vision that comes in here of where you, the direction you want to go. And it's like, it's very, very clear. Now, right after that, right around the 16th and 17th, Venus in uh, areas in your 12th, which is your ruling planet also, it's going to square Pluto at the end of Capricorn in your ninth. And so this is a little bit of a difficult aspect and it could involve you being very tempted um, or very triggered, you know, kind of subconsciously behind the scenes by maybe belief systems or maybe someone else's opinions or um, maybe something that's kind of shady that's going on that feels unfair or um, that feels immoral in some way. It's like your morality could be tested here or what you desire, what you want or what you feel is good for you could be tested here in some way. And so there is this kind of intensity coming in here, um, this edginess coming in here that could be a little prickly for a minute from like the 16th to the 17th. And it could involve you having to kind of let go of something or accept something or surrender to something um, that you would rather fight. Um, and so that definitely could be something that you see that comes in. So then um, we have the Aries new moon right after that on the 21st. So this is going to bring in more of a fresh energy and things are going to get a little bit more positive from here. Um, and it is going to bring in an energy though, where you are going to be kind of leaning back, going within more secluded, doing things more behind the scenes or a little bit more focused on something more behind the scenes or 
uh, you know, kind of pulling back from your day-to-day busyness in life and wanting to just kind of do you, do things for you, get back into like, you know, releasing a certain amount of energy or, you know, doing something behind the scenes that's going to help you kind of chill a little bit more and or bring you back to center, bring you back to who you are a little bit more. So on the 23rd, we have Pluto entering Aquarius, which is your 10th house for the first time for only a few months. So it's just giving us a preview. But this is definitely going to be a time that over the long term is going to bring a lot of drastic change in terms of your career, in terms of what you want in the world, your goals, in terms of how you project your power, power struggles in terms of the world and your career and your goals and things like that. And it's really going to, you know, change a lot of things and bring in a lot of deep transformation in this area of your life. But again, this is just going to move in for a few months. So it's just a preview. The effects of this are going to last a lot longer. It's going to take decades for this to like really show us what it's going to do. So, um, you know, it's just a few months. You may notice some shifts. You may notice some things start, you know, beginning to change in terms of your career or you start wanting to make some really deep changes that maybe you've been scared to make um, in terms of your career, but that start happening or that you start thinking about or certain things happen that kind of have you really thinking about this starting this month and over the next couple of months as, you know, Pluto moves through Aquarius for a few months. So, on the 25th, Mars finally moves out of your second house of Gemini where you've been kind of going back and forth in terms of money, finances, income, resources, you know, all of that, your priorities, and where it's going to now move into Cancer into your third house where you're going to be putting more energy into your day-to-day -day life, what's going on here and now, the close connections in your day-to-day -day life, things that make you feel more comfortable, more safe, more secure. And so that's gonna kind of be the focus as Mars moves into your third house on the 25th and stays there for the next couple months. So then on the 28th um, through the 31st, we have some really cool, interesting transits that we're ending the month with on more of like a positive note. We're gonna have Mercury conjunct Jupiter in Aries in your 12th house. So again, bringing a lot of epiphanies and realizations and clear kind of cutting realizations on what needs to be let go of, what you need to heal, what you need to do for you, um, you know, things like this. And then also we're going to have Venus, your ruling planet again, conjunct Uranus in your sign and also in your sign by this point as well. So you're going to have your ruling planet at home. You're going to start feeling a lot more like yourself, a lot more comfortable in your own skin. And then when she hits Uranus right around the very end of the month from like the 28th to the 31st, you're really going to be feeling this shakeup of excitement and energy and maybe wanting to change some things like change your style, change your look change your vibe, you know, like liberate yourself and, you know, go into this kind of like shake it up kind of energy, like ready to shake things up with who you are and your ideas about where you want to go and what you desire and what brings you, you know, pleasure and fulfillment. Like you're really going to be feeling that kind of like electric energy, that eccentric energy of like wanting to shake things up with yourself and your style and your personality and your appearance and all of that, your vibe. So that's going to be really cool. And then that's basically how we end the month. So let me know down below, Taurus, if this resonated with you, if you could see a lot of these things happening, feel free to come back and watch this throughout the month just to, you know, get a reminder of what's happening and what the hell is going on. If you're ever feeling a little bit confused or off or whatever, I love you guys. And we're going to move on to the next one. What is up, Gemini, and welcome to your horoscope for March 2023. I hope you guys are doing well. So this month for you, Gemini, is a lot about making really clear and positive decisions and advancements in terms of what you want, in terms of your learning, your knowledge, your education, possibly even travel, but also your career, your career goals, your future, what you really want out of life and the direction that you're going in, and also uh, having some new opportunities for healing and evolution and moving past old shit in terms of your social life, your friend groups, your hopes, your aspirations, and the kind of people that you connect with. And so this looks like a very interesting month for you, Gemini. You're also going to finally have Mars moving out of your first house and into your second house. So that'll be interesting too. So let's start with like the first few days of March. Like the very first few days of March, we have a lot of interesting things happening. Venus and Jupiter are going to be coming into their conjunction and they're going to be right up against Chiron as well in Aries in your 11th house, which is going to bring 
a lot of inspiration, hope, and optimism, and even potentially like blessings and benefits and opportunities when it comes to your social life and other people, and uh, maybe even leadership or, you know, just other people in your life somehow with, you know, this happening in your 11th house in the sign of Aries. And it's also, I think, a time of you really overcoming old insecurities or past wounds or past limitations in terms of connecting with others and in terms of, you know, your your dreams and your aspirations and your hopes in the world, you know? So it's like you're really moving past this, you know, potential block or this old story that you've told yourself about what's possible or what's capable. While you're also making very clear, decisive and important decisions and seeing what you need to do in terms of planning something for your future or, you know, your education, et cetera, because Mercury and Saturn are also gonna be coming into their conjunction this first week of March in your ninth house in Aquarius. And so it's like you're really getting clear on a lot of the lessons you've been learning the last few years with Saturn moving through your ninth house because it's about to leave your ninth house this month. And you've had to learn a lot of really serious lessons in terms of you know, your educational pursuits and your knowledge and your faith and your belief systems and travel and what you actually want out of the world, like what the, like the kind of experience that you actually want to have in this life. And so it's like you're making maybe like a very clear decision or having a lot of really big revelations and epiphanies in terms of those things right at the very beginning of the month. And so then we get to the seventh, which is where Saturn will finally leave your ninth house and move into your 10th house of Pisces, which is going to bring a large, large, serious focus for the next few years on your 10th house of career, authority figures, your future, your long-term goals and achievements, your public image, your reputation, your brand, things like this are going to really come into focus. You're going to be really structuring a lot of these big dreams and hopes and visions for your future into a actual physical plan or reality, right? Like you're going to really be focused on bringing that stuff into your life, into your reality, and how you can get really serious about it. But this is also gonna take a large amount of maturing and growing up and having a lot of trust and a lot of faith while also being balancing that out with being realistic and mature about it at the same time. And so this definitely is gonna be a time of like glowing up into the mature adult person in terms of the career that you wanna have the vision that you have and how you're going to bring that into the world, how you're going to bring that into your physical reality over the next couple years. So you can notice some things start changing with this in March, but you're really, really going to notice this, you know, as it keeps playing out because it is a long-term transit. So it's something that you're going to be, you know, kind of noticing over the next few years. So be aware of that because that's the really big transit that we have for this month. So then we get to the 12th and we're going to have a really cool, you know, conjunction between between Jupiter and Chiron. That's when they're really gonna be exact. And so this is a time where you're gonna be really evolving past your wounds. And this could be by maybe you're relating with other people or you find other people that share a similar story to you or that have similar beliefs to you or that are just really like resonating with your soul or making you feel like inspired and motivated to move past certain insecurities or certain wounds or certain trauma in your life or to heal something, right? Like it feels bigger than you, like larger than life around this time and then we get to the 13th through like the 15th and mars in your sign is going to be squaring neptune in your 10th house and so mars has been in your sign for several months since like the end of last summer in 2022 so you've had to learn a lot of lessons in terms of these martian kind of things like asserting yourself asserting your opinion being more direct like taking no bullshit speaking your mind you know getting physical like getting fit maybe like having a lot of motivation and energy or what to do with that energy where to direct that energy right like who you are as a person and how you can embrace and embody more of those mars assertive traits like and not being afraid of conflict and things like that asserting yourself more etc and dealing with conflict or maybe even being potentially a bit confrontational yourself, you know, like egging people on or like poking people's buttons or just being very edgy and different, you know. Um, so Mars is going to be squaring Neptune. So this looks like maybe right around the middle of the month to like the 12th to like the 15th that you've been really trying to find a way to get around something or escape something, especially in terms of something about your future, your career, authority figures, 
the direction that you're going in, your goals that you just haven't wanted to face, right? It's like you've been really learning these lessons of being more assertive, but this particular area of your life, it's like you've been trying to find a way around it. You've been trying to find another avenue, another path. You've been trying to just like dodge it or let it go or just not look at it or just avoid it but this last square is like really kind of pushing you to finally face this accept this feel this deal with this you know it's really an energy of like you know it could have felt confusing or even a bit hopeless or something you know on and off over the last several months but right around this time it's like okay like i can either keep soaking in this energy and keep just like sulking around and be the victim here or I can take control of my fucking life and I can accept this or let this go or choose to see a higher vision vision or you know like let it go for now and and you know see what happens you know like there's so many different ways you could deal with this it could be an energy of releasing forgiveness it could be an energy of facing something head on um and healing it you know it could be an energy of like you know, maybe doing energy work or getting into your body and like transmuting it through that, right? Like this could play out in so many different ways, but either way, it's going to bring up some kind of tension that you have been kind of neglecting or dodging or escaping or not wanting to like really directly face, right? And so this is a time where that needs to get resolved. So when it comes back up, this is going to be to resolve it, to face it and really kind of maybe cut the bullshit out and get real about it, right? And so that was what I really see kind of happening here with this. But at the same time, right after that, from the 15th to the 17th, we have this really beautiful triple conjunction happening of the Sun, Mercury, and Neptune. So right after that, it's like there's this clarity, there's this awareness, there's this epiphany, there's this revelation that comes in in terms of this future vision that you have or this future goal or your career or whatever. It's like it's like, wow, like I can see this now. Like I see all the possibilities. Like there's this limitlessness that comes in. There's this vision that comes in that feels very invigorating and that feels very like, oh, this is where I'm meant to go or this is what I'm fated to do or this is what I'm destined to do. Like there's something that's like kind of divine and magical that comes in here right from like the 15th to the 17th once you face that like hard aspect, you know? And then from there, I feel like things start getting more positive other than one other Kind of rough aspect that we have from the 16th to the 17th of Venus squaring Pluto, which deals with a different part of your chart. Um, but Venus and Aries is going to square Pluto in your eighth from your 11th. So this definitely could be a time where like your social life and finances are in some kind of intense conflict or altercation or, you know, something is happening here where there's like possibly a power struggle or a potential power struggle that it's like you're trying to get out of or you're trying to just do you or other people are just trying to do them. But then there's these like ties or this fear or this power struggle that's happening in terms of, you know, shared resources or finances, or you're just seeing where maybe you're, you haven't quite been in your power or where, you, where you've maybe even been giving your power away to some extent in terms of these areas of your life. So that's going to happen briefly from the 16th to the 17th. But then right after that, things again start kind of lightening up even more with the Aries new moon happening, which is going to be this like fresh, beautiful new start um, in this area where it's like you really see how you want to lead, how you want to step into your assertiveness, step into your power in a way that feels more responsible and where you feel more capable and confident, you know. And then we also will have Pluto moving into Aquarius in your ninth house. Um, so this is going to be a long-term transit, but it's only going to be in for a few months this first time. But this is just kind of a taste of it where you're really going to have a lot of deep transformational shifts happening in terms of your educational pursuits. This could be something where it's like you change your major or you're like, you know what? I don't even want to go to school for this anymore. I want to go, go to school for this now or I want to go do this or learn this. Like there's going to be an intense transformational, you know, change that begins to happening in, in terms of your education, your knowledge, your faith, your belief systems, the experience that you want to have in this life, the, you know, just different things that you want to experience in this life and traveling and, you know, potentially legalities and, you know, your moralities and things like that. So that's something that's going to happen. But then we also have Mars on the 25th moving from out of your sign finally. Um, so and into your second house of cancer. So a lot of your energy is going to start going towards your money, your finances, your resources, 
um, your priorities, what's important to you, what's close to your heart, what feels safe and secure to you. And so again, it's kind of taking you out of this energy of like, you know, maybe you've been kind of fearing breaking this connection with other people that involves some kind of shared financial agreement or shared contract or shared resources in some way. But it's like, you know what, like I need to focus on what's good for me and what feels like emotionally safe and secure for me. And um, so that could also be the case towards the end of the month. And then right from like the 28th to the 31st, we have a couple interesting transits happening here. We're going to have Mercury coming into its conjunction with Jupiter and Aries, which also is going to give you a lot of epiphanies, plans and ideas in terms of how you want to evolve and grow and expand in terms of your audience, in terms of your social life, in terms of your connections, in terms of collaborations, acquaintances, networking, marketing, etc. And then we also are going to have Venus conjunct Uranus the very last couple of days of the month um, in your 12th house, which is going to be a time of you feeling, you know, like you want to be liberated from something. And, you know, this could be a very great time to go on a vacation or go on a retreat or go on a spa day or do something different out of the norm that helps you release, break free, liberate yourself things like that. So that is what I'm seeing this month for you, Jim and I. Let me know down below what you guys are feeling for this month. If you could see a lot of these focuses and themes coming in for you already, I'd really, really love to know and hear your feedback and hear where you're at. And we are going to move on to the next side. Bye. Cancer darling, welcome to your March 2023 horoscope for the month ahead. I hope you guys are doing fabulous. So this month is such a big month, Cancer, and it really looks for you guys like you are really stepping into a lot of awareness, a lot of epiphanies around where you're going in your life, what you want to study, the things that you want to educate yourself about, the experiences that you really want to have in this life that are going to be the most meaningful and purposeful to you. This month is a lot about finding that purpose, that faith, that trust in your life again, really getting clear on your beliefs or finding a new path in terms of your beliefs or your spiritual practices or you know what you actually believe in or have faith in. But also it's bringing in a lot of opportunity to grow and expand and evolve along or I'm sorry, outside of personal wounds, limitations, old insecurities that you've had in terms of thinking um, about what you can or cannot do in terms of your career, in terms of your future, in terms of your goals. And in terms of leading yourself in your life, right? Like Jupiter is in your 10th house. This has been so much about self-leadership, especially in terms of your career, especially in terms of your goals, especially in terms of your life. Like how are you leading yourself? And um, that's really, I think, a big part of this month as well. And it's also very much about structuring your long-term beliefs, dreams, you know, the, the places that feel purposeful and meaningful to you and getting very serious about those and bringing those into reality instead of maybe just letting them constantly like wash away or dissolve or ignoring them or avoiding them, etc. And so that is what we're going to talk about this month somewhat. But basically the first week of March Cancer, we have this beautiful energy happening as Venus and Jupiter, the two benefics are coming into their conjunction in the sign of Aries, and they're also going to be right there with Chiron. And so this is your 10th house. So the first week of March is going to be very much about evolving past old wounds, old limitations, old stories that you've told yourself in terms of what you're capable of, in terms of your career, in terms of where you're going, the direction of your life, your goals, your long-term goals, like your future. Like this is like, where the fuck are you going? What the fuck are you doing? Are you taking charge? Are you leading or are you let life leading you? Right. And so this is kind of reconciling that like, oh, I don't have to hold myself back anymore. Oh, I don't have to keep like playing small or making myself small to like fit into something or keep the peace or whatever. Like I can take charge of my life. I can go after what I want. I can assert myself. I can, you know, grow past these old wounds and like heal them, right? Like it, it brings in this really nice sense of healing and optimism and ins inspiration to places that may have felt kind of wounded, stagnant or stuck or insecure before, right? And so I really, really love this for you. And also that first week of March, you're also having this these really clear revelations and decisions that are coming in with Mercury conjunct Saturn in your eighth house, you know, of like getting very, very clear on where you're not in your power, where you haven't been taking responsibility, where you've been kind of just giving in to like chaos and 
all of this stuff and where you need to get very clear in terms of your finances, in terms of your investments, <clears throat> in terms of you know the goals that you have with your money, with your finances and the plan that you have, the strategy that you have and all of that. So that's gonna really hit you this first week of March. It's like, oh shit, I have not been taking this very seriously. I have things I wanna do in my life. I have places I wanna go. I have things I wanna see, experiences I wanna have. You know, I want to live a meaningful life and I want to, I have big dreams, big goals, big visions for my career, for my success, for my long-term future. How can you start stepping into that energy and what, what has been holding you back or distracting you, you know, and you've also had goals with your money, your finances, your investments, you know, like, and all of that. And it's like, what has been holding you back there? You know what I mean? It's like, that's going to get very, very clear and you may make some decisions or start putting up some boundaries and start taking some action that first week of March. Now, to even compound on that, we have Saturn then moving into Pisces on the 7th of March, which is a very big transit because Saturn's been in Aquarius for the last few years. And so you're coming out of the Saturn and Aquarius from your eighth house, which has been a very transformational time of you getting very, very serious about the things in your life that have needed to change and also very serious about your inner power, very serious about power struggles, very serious about taking responsibility and accountability for where you're at in life, your money, your finances, et cetera, shared resources, you know, kind of like, you know, it's been facing a lot of burdens that you've had that have been kind of holding you back in terms of money, finances, freedom, your resources, et cetera, and uh, your connections and ties with other people and really getting serious about changing those things. But now Saturn this month is moving into your ninth house. So this is gonna be a time where you're getting very serious about what is holding you back in terms of what you wanna experience in your life, your belief systems, right? Your belief systems, how you what, what you wanna educate yourself about, like what do you need to learn to get to where you wanna go, right? What experiences do you wanna have? Do you wanna travel? Like this is really structuring your dreams in this area in terms of what's meaningful, what's purposeful, what do you believe in? Um, where do you wanna go? The experiences that you wanna have and bringing them into your physical reality in a very practical way, in a tangible way. So you can actually experience the things that you wanna experience in this life, you're right? Like, so this is gonna be very much about structuring your educational pursuits, your beliefs, your life, so you can live the life that you wanna live, so you can, you know, like this could be a time also where you get very much into healing, very much into self-development, um, you know, ventures, very much like get very serious and very responsible and very accountable with these things. And so I think this is gonna be a time where you're getting really, really focused on that. And it could be a time where a lot of you end up changing your beliefs or, um, you know, like letting go of a religion that you've been a part of or a belief system that you've held on to for so long because it's just not you anymore, you know? And so that's going to start this month, but it is a long-term transit. So it is something that you're going to notice over the next few years as well. So keep that in mind. So with that being said, the next big thing is from like the 12th to the 14th, we're going to have Mars and Gemini in your 12th house <laughs> that has been wreaking havoc in your 12th house, um, squaring the planet of Neptune in your ninth house. And so this is going to be a time that could definitely bring in some conflict or confusion in terms of where you have been escaping something, where you've been self-sabotaging, where you kind of go behind your own back and do things that, you know, kind of like end up screwing you, you know, like where you have just been doing things that can lead to other issues, right? So, you know, Neptune in your ninth is like, hey, like get into spirituality, evolve your beliefs, you know, like really practice what you preach, like start learning new things, like come to this place of oneness or come to this place of like seeing how everything's interconnected, etc. But Mars in your 12th is like a whole lot of conflict behind the scenes or subconsciously or, you know, where you've been really having to face all these conflicting stories that you tell yourself subconsciously that are holding you back or that end up going against yourself, right? So it's really been a time where you've had to kind of, you've maybe felt more secluded than usual the last several months because you've had to work on a lot of things. You've had to work on your mental state. You've had to work on your mindset, you know, different things like that. So this could be like this last challenge or like test here to like your faith of like, oh my gosh, like, am I just doomed to keep repeating these patterns? Or what do I need to change within myself to 
hold on to this sense of faith or belief in myself, you know? And so those are some of the things that you could definitely notice coming up right around that middle of the month that could be a little bit more challenging, but it will change shortly after that because from the 15th to the 17th, we have a beautiful, harmonious <laughs> conjunction of the sun, Mercury, and Neptune in your ninth house. So this is making you very aware of your faith, your beliefs, your the interconnectedness, that I was just talking about, like this is really bringing something to light and making you very aware of it, making you, it's like helping you feel it, helping you embody it, helping you experience it. And so this looks like potentially like a new path is opening for a new belief system or a new train of thought, a new theory or philosophy or um, a new practice that you begin studying, you know, like this is a really beautiful energy that could awaken you to like a plan for how to move forward because of this last square from Mars in your 12th. It's like, you know what? I'm done doing this shit. Like I'm letting this shit go. I'm letting all this old resentment or energy or, you know, whatever it is go that I've been hanging on to. Um, that's been kind of controlling me behind the scenes that is not getting me anywhere, right? It's like, I'm letting this go and I'm moving towards this beautiful, like awakening that I'm having or this new sense of this newfound, like faith or belief that I'm developing. Like this is like just a really beautiful energy from the 15th to the 17th. So really watch out for that time this month because it's like something is coming in. Like you're really starting to realize something and it's all making sense where it wasn't before because Mercury is literally the ruler of Gemini where Mars is at. So it's like, you're going to be making sense of like the last several months plus some with this transit. It's like things are just going to really come in. It's like a massive download, a massive epiphany, a massive awakening that you feel on a higher level. That's like, holy shit, you know, and I feel like it's all just going to really come in and, and show you how everything's connected and make a lot more sense for you to be able to start healing and move forward. So so other than that, we do have a somewhat another difficult transit happening here with Venus squaring Pluto from like the 16th to the 17th. So Venus is going to be in Aries in your 10th house squaring Pluto and Capricorn in your 7th house. So this could definitely be a time where there are some intense power struggles or conflicts that kind of come up. Uh, in terms of your future, where you want to go, and relationships. So it kind of looks like a final test of Pluto being in your seventh house. Um, I mean, not like a final test, but the final test right before it moves into Aquarius, your eighth house for the first time for a few months, uh, where your relationships are definitely being provoked in some way, your relationship sector. So this definitely could be like, you know, you're focused on you, you're doing you, you're, you're moving forward, you're taking action. And then it's like, oh, there's this toxic fuck boy or toxic situation that like arises and you're kind of like, Ugh, do I really want to go back down that alley? You know, like, do I really want to go back down there? You know? And so it's like, this is really learning your power and, you know, kind of self will kind of energy here. Like, do you like, what do you want to do here? Like you, you decide basically, but it's kind of just this power struggle or some alluring, uh, toxic kind of energy that could come up that could feel magnetic or great in the moment, but ends up not being too great and could start some kind of conflict within yourself. And so just kind of be weary of that around uh, the 16th to the 17th. Then um, we have the Aries new moon on the 21st, starting this like new start, this new energy in terms of your career, your life goals, your future, etc. And then on the 23rd, we're going to have Pluto finally moving out of your seventh house of relationships and commitments and long-term commitments and into your eighth house of, you know, your, your finances, investments, and shared finances and resources, business, also very strong, intense, and transformational, powerful experiences. And so this is definitely a time where a lot of change could start happening over these next few months, but we may not always see that um, for a little bit because this is a long-term transit, so it doesn't mean it's all gonna happen right away on the first day that it moves in, but it is gonna be a shift where there is gonna be this deep underlying transformation that begins to happen in terms of what you want financially, in terms of your inner power, in terms of power struggles, in terms of business, in terms of investments, and your goals in this area and, and what needs to be completely restructured here. So 
Then on the 25th, Mars is going to move into your sign, Cancer. So it's finally going to move out of your 12th house where you've been having to focus on so much internal, behind the scenes conflict and issues and all of that, um, self sabotage, you know, things like that, and mental health. And now it's going to move into your first house where it's definitely going to be a lot more about you. Like your focus is really going to shift to you and your career and where you're going, where you're headed. You're going to be feeling a lot more motivated. You're going to be feeling a lot more assertive and certain and direct, and you're going to have a lot more energy that you're going to want to be burning off. But you could also find that you're a little bit more confrontational or, you know, getting into conflicts a little easier. So do just kind of be weary of that. So then um, last but not least, we also are going to have at the very end of the month some interesting, really cool transits. Mercury is going to conjunct Jupiter and Aries in your 10th house, which could bring in some big news or a big announcement or some big revelations, some big decisions, um, some big plans in terms of your career, in terms of your future, in terms of your goals. And then also Venus is going to conjunct Uranus in your 11th house of Taurus. And so this could also bring in some really exciting plans with friends or your social life or some shifts and unique kind of, uh, unique but kind of cool and liberating vibes in your social life with friends, marketing, advertising, networking, things like that. So watch out for that at the end of the month. So that is what I'm seeing for you this month, Cancer. Let me know down below if this all made sense, if you could feel like you could see a lot of these things happening in March, if you've already noticed some of these things happening. I'd love, love, love to hear your feedback. Thank you guys so much. And we're going to move on to the next sign. Alrighty, my lovely fellow Leos, welcome to your March 2023 horoscope, boo! I hope you guys are doing well. Let's get into it. So March is such a big and interesting month for everybody, but I'm really excited to see what happens for us. So definitely make sure you keep me posted down below or on my socials, like I need to know, I'm a nosy bitch. So please let me know so we can compare notes here. Uh, but what I really see for us in March as Leo Risings is that we're really going to come into an energy of seeing beyond our limits and seeing beyond our boundaries in the month of March, seeing beyond our own personal beliefs, our own personal insecurities, and all the old stories that we've been telling ourselves that maybe have been keeping us stuck for a little while, right? And there's going to be a lot of change, a lot of transformation in the month of March where we're going to really come out of March feeling completely different. I feel like March is a very big month for like purification and possibility and inspiration for Leo Risings. I really, really feel that for us this month. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens. I really feel like by the end of the month, we are going to be focused a little bit more internally in some areas and we're going to be a little bit more introverted in some areas because we're really going to be focused on healing and going through some transformative inner internal experiences in order to kind of like almost like detox or release or let go of the things that are really holding us back and to really go in. And so I really feel like a healing journey is starting at the end of March for a lot of Leo Risings. But what I see here to start it off, the very first week of March is really beautiful because we have the two benefic planets, Venus and Jupiter, coming into their conjunction in Aries and they are basically conjunct Chiron as well, um, which is all in our ninth house of higher learning, higher education, our belief systems, the experiences that we really want to have in this life that we find meaningful, that we find purposeful. So we've been really kind of searching for a sense of purpose with Jupiter in our ninth house. We've been really looking at where's our sense of purpose? What is our sense of self as well? Like Jupiter and Aries in our ninth house has really been, I think, teaching us a lot about self-leadership in terms of our teaching, our learning, our education, and our own experiences, and how we can see our own experiences from a higher perspective and really take that and evolve that and maybe use that to help others even. So the first week of March, I think is really about overcoming or evolving past, expanding beyond personal experiences that we've had, old wounds, old stories, old traumas, old insecurities, in order to really get back into that like confidence and leadership energy that is within us, right? It's seeing like all we've had to overcome, 
all the battles that we've had to face and really trying to find a sense or a grasp on what we really believe and what we really want out of life and what's going to feel the most fulfilling, meaningful, and purposeful to us, right? But it's also very much teaching us about how to just act on things instead of putting things off, how to stop procrastinating and just take that first step instead of trying to look at the whole staircase. And so what I've found as Leo rising with Jupiter in our ninth house so far is it can get very overwhelming because it's easy to see this big vision. It's easy to feel purpose and meaning in this like big vision, but knowing the first step to take in that big vision or knowing what to do or how to take action to get there or the path to get there is kind of the issue. And so what I really think is like, it's kind of showing us this month, look, you don't need a step-by-step -step plan. Like just focus on the first step. Just focus on what comes to you. Just focus on what you know, like without having to think about it, like what is the first step to get to this big, bold goal or vision or whatever, going back to school or traveling or whatever is going to feel like you've lived a meaningful and purposeful life. Like what is the first fucking step to that without even thinking about it? Do that, right? Like that's what Aries is. It's quick, fast. It doesn't sit there and think about shit. And so this is kind of, I feel like the, the energy I've been personally feeling as a Leo rising with Jupiter moving through the ninth. And it's also very much, like I said, about self-leadership too, and leading yourself through these different life experiences even when things are a little bit unclear, even when things can feel a little bit difficult at times, or even when you're not quite sure where you're going or if the steps you're taking are really adding up in some way, right? And so this is a great time though for us to be diving into new learning pursuits, learning new things, figuring new things out, going into educational pursuits, etc. So I really love this the first week of March for us. Like we're really expanding beyond our perceived limitations and old wounds and thinking that we can't or thinking that we can't handle something when really we can, right? And it's like, we're seeing that, we're being more optimistic about that, we're being more inspired. And it can also bring in some benefits or even some opportunities to us financially as well or um, resource-wise as well, uh, that first week of March. So we also have Mercury conjunct Saturn this first week of March, which is also in our, well, not also, but it's in our seventh house of relationships and other people. So we're also getting very clear on certain boundaries or having very serious talks and conversations with people in our lives about boundaries that we need to set, decisions that we need to make, you know, accountability that we need to take, responsibilities that we have. Like we're getting very clear about that. Maybe having like a a serious discussion with people in our lives or the important people in our lives about those things as well. But it's like they need to be done because we we know like this is what I need to do, right? Like, so I actually think it's actually a very positive thing. So the next big thing that's happening this month is that Saturn is finally moving into mother effing Pisces. Like, hallelujah, Jesus. Like Saturn has been in our seventh house in Aquarius for the last several years, like since 2020. And so we have really been learning a lot in terms of maturing, growing up, getting serious, in terms of relationships with other people, commitments, etc. And also just within ourselves as well, because it's been opposing our ascendant, you know, so we've had to learn to grow up and mature ourselves and step into a more mature like version of who we are, right? Like we've had to really like uh, take accountability, take responsibility for things and, you know, step up into a more mature version of ourselves. And we also have had to hire our standards in terms of what we want with relationships, what we want with other people, the kinds of relationships that we want to have, you know, like a lot of people with, you know, a lot of Leo risings with Saturn moving through the seventh have had probably a lot of relationship hurdles they've had to jump through, whether it be breakups or whether it be divorces or whether it be marriage or whether it be, you know, taking responsibility in relationships, knowing how to be mature about relationships, knowing how to, you know, be in certain relationship dynamics, but it's also showed us like what we actually really want in relationships, the, the, the standard that we have for our relationships, you know, like, do we want somebody that is not serious, that is just going to screw us around? Or do we want someone that is serious, that is mature, that has their shit together, that can meet us halfway, you know what I mean? That can, that is on our level, right? But to do that, we've also had to up level. We've also had to mature. We've also had to get our own shit together, right? And so it's like we demand more from our relationships now than maybe we did before. And that's kind of probably what we needed, you know? So now Saturn is finally moving into our eighth house into Pisces, 
on March 7th. And so this is going to be a time where we get very serious <laughs> about our financial lives, our business, our finances, shared resources, loans, debts, assets. You know, where are we going? What is the goal in terms of finances? Do we trust in that goal? Do we feel like we can accomplish that goal? Those are the things that are really gonna come up over these next few years with Saturn moving through our eighth house. It's really gonna show us where we need to restructure our finances, where we need to restructure these areas of our lives and get very serious about the goals that we have, the investments we wanna make, what we wanna build financially, and how that's going to bring in a flow of more, how that's gonna bring in a flow to our income or how that's going to affect our lives in some way, right? So this could be a time where we start getting very serious about cleaning up our financial, you know, our financial worlds, like paying off debts or, um, owning up to certain financial responsibilities. This could also be a time where we like either get out of or get into contracts financially, agreements financially involving other people, right? Like where we sign deals or, you know, take out loans or, you know, get involved with someone that we're gonna have a business with or whatever, you know, like where we're, we're doing business as well and we're getting very business minded and business oriented with Saturn moving into the eighth for these next couple of years. So this starts this month, but this is a long-term transit that's going to last the next couple of years. So be aware of that. We're going to get very, very serious about this area, bringing our financial dreams into reality, right? Bringing it into the physical. And Saturn's going to make sure that we do that in the correct way and that we go about it in the right way, you know, and things like that. So definitely that's something that we're going to start noticing now that Saturn's moving into Pisces this month on the 7th. So the other uh, thing that we have happening in March is that Mars, lovely Mars and Gemini is going to square Neptune in Pisces in our eighth from the like 12th to the 14th. So this is going to be a time that could be a little bit confusing or that could test us a little bit, that could test our faith. And in terms of our finances, our business, our money, situations, etc. Mars is in the 11th house, so it's dealing with organizations, institutions, other people, social dynamics, social groups. Um, you know, anything that we are involved with financially with other people could really come up around this time and really kind of test us in some way. If we've been avoiding a situation or if we haven't been seeing a situation quite clearly, um, if we've been trying to escape a financial situation, this could come up and kind of cut through that, cut through the bullshit to where we have to kind of let go of something or accept something or forgive something or something like that, like take responsibility for something. So that is something that we could definitely see coming up from like the 12th to the 14th here. It could get a little bit turbulent, but this is the last and final square of this because we've had this square a couple other times over the last several months as Mars has been going through Gemini for like fucking ever. And so this is the last time. It's like we're no longer putting up with bullshit and we're getting clear about what we need to do financially and what we need to do in terms of other people financially or how other people are involved, you know, financially in some way. And I like this because right after this, we have the Sun, Mercury, and Neptune coming into their conjunction from the 14th to the 17th. And so this is also showing that we are getting very clear about our dreams, about what we want, about a higher vision, about what needs to be embodied, what needs to be practiced, the plan. It's all starting to make sense, right? in terms of what we want financially, what we want with our long-term financial goals, our financial investments, our shared resources, shared finances, what we want in terms of you know those kinds of things. And also the power in our life, what has power over us and you know the power that we hold as well and the transformative experiences that we may be having. It's like something comes in here from the 14th to the 17th and it starts making sense and it feels like it feels like it's coming from somewhere else. It feels like it's coming from something higher than ourselves. It feels like it's coming from, you know, the divine. It feels magical. It feels inspirational. It's like something is being interconnected here with the sun, Mercury, and Neptune conjunction. It's like we are being shown something or shown a certain belief or faith or vision in something that is going to carry us through in terms of these, you know, this this financial new financial beginning or new business beginning that's starting here around this time. So really pay attention from the 14th to the 17th with that triple conjunction of the Sun, Mercury, and Neptune because it really is coming in and showing us something. It's bringing in something to our awareness. It's bringing in a sense of faith, a sense of 
belief as a vision, you know, an awakening to something, a realization. I really, really am excited to see what this energy holds. It could be a plan, a strategy. You know, it could be a person that comes in that, you know, it, it, like is the exact kind of person that we needed to talk to about something that shows us a path, you know, like it could just be so many things. So I'm really, really excited to see how that plays out for us. And so then on the 16th to 17th, we do have a little bit of a tense aspect between Venus and Pluto from our ninth house to our sixth house. So this is going to be a little bit of a, a tense, like kind of intense, um, battle or conflict or power struggle between something to do with our day-to-day -day lives, our work, our routines, our co-workers, the people that we work with, or even potentially um, our health in some way versus something that we want to do for us or something that we believe in, um, like a personal belief that we have or something like that, um, or even something legal or something um, moral, you know, and so there's going to be some kind of tense struggle between those two parts of life from the 16th to 17th with Venus square Pluto. So do just kind of be aware of that. So then on the 23rd, we finally have Pluto moving into Aquarius and out of Capricorn for the first time. Uh, it won't stay, but for a few months, so it's not going to be the final time that it does this, but it is the first time that it will do this. And, um, yeah, so when Pluto moves into Aquarius, for the next few months um, from March 23rd onward, you know, we're really going to notice this deep psychological transformative change that begins to happen in terms of our relationship life, in terms of the people that we want to be around, in terms of the relationships we don't want to have. It's going to bring a lot of change and it's going to change what we're possibly looking for within a relationship, right? We may start wanting more depth if it's not there. We may start wanting, you know, something that really has us in like a, a very deep transformational bond or something that brings in like a very deep alchemical intense energy into our lives and that really like changes our lives from the inside out. Like we may be craving something a little bit more intense and more deep and more, um, transformative in terms of our relationships for a while, but we may also notice that some people in our lives or some people we begin to attract are also somewhat maybe toxic or, you know, chaotic or whatever. And so those are things that could come up as well over the next several years as this transit begins to happen. But again, so it's only for a few months. So you may notice some things over the next few months. It's going to be a little bit of a preview, um, but it's only going to be for a few months this particular year that Pluto is going to be in our seventh. So, um, cause it's going to retrograde back into Capricorn. This could also be a very deep and transformative time for Leo Risings if you work with other people, if you work with clients, if you have business partners, agreements with other people, you know, things like that, that could also be coming up. You could get a lot more serious about those things or get very called to start, you know, having more deeper connections with people in your life, whether work-related, client-related, or, you know, romantic partner, marriage-related, or friend-related even. And so... On the 25th, Mars is going to finally move out of Gemini, out of our 11th house of friends, social lives, our hopes and our aspirations, where we've been kind of second guessing all of these different things, um, our audience, who we're speaking to, where we want to, you know, the people that we vibe with, all of that. Um, and it's going to move into the 12th house of Cancer, our 12th house of Cancer. And so this definitely is going to be a time where we start feeling like we want to go within could be a time where we <clears throat> maybe get sick. Some people, some Leo risings could definitely get sick around this time with Mars going through the 12th. Um, you know, you could have a sickness for a week or two, kind of be down for the count. It's going to pull us out of our day-to-day -day reality. And it's going to be so much more about going within. It's going to be more about making changes and healing in terms of our internal world and in terms of letting things go and facing old behaviors, facing subconscious emotions or subconscious self-sabotaging behaviors and habits. And we also may start wanting to, you know, seclude ourselves a little bit more. It's like we're going to be pulling back. You know, this would be a great time to get away, go on vacation, go on a retreat, really get really focused on your spirituality. If you're a Leo rising and you're into spirituality, which I'm guessing many of you are, do that. Because if you don't do that, something's going to pull you away. Okay, something's going to end up pulling you out of your day-to-day -day life. And it may not be wanted, you know, it may not be something that you want to deal with. So if you just kind of do it yourself and I'm like, you know what, I'm going to start getting 
really, really dead, dead in like my healing again and like going on a healing journey and like make this whole thing out of it, really put your energy and your passion there. That is where you will thrive. Um, that is where you will see benefits. But if you don't, you know, or at least put it towards working on yourself or something, doing something behind the scenes, getting more rest, you know, letting go, um, all that kind of shit, you know, like healing, taking care of yourself. If you don't, then something's going to pull you out of it. And that's usually a lot less enjoyable from my experience and from what I've seen with others. It's kind of like, damn it, like I was doing things and now I have to deal with this or now I'm being pulled out of it. Now I got sick or someone's in the hospital. I got to take care of them, whatever. Like you're going to need to really, really nurture yourself and put a lot of energy into nurturing, nurturing yourself, your rest, your body whatever you've been neglecting at this time, okay? And so if you can just get on board with that, it's all good. But um, yeah, so Mars will be in Cancer in the 12th, which definitely is not the greatest transit, I'm not gonna lie to you, but it can be very positive and impactful and you can get a lot of great things out of it if you can get on board with it, okay? So just wanna give you a heads up there. So on the 28th, Mercury and Jupiter will conjunct in our ninth house, which finally looks like we are making sense of something, making sense of this Jupiter and Aries transit, making sense of what our plan needs to be, what the steps are, what the path is, like I was saying before. And then on the, the very last couple of days of the month, from like the 29th to the 31st, Venus is gonna conjunct Uranus and Taurus. So this looks like a major breakthrough in terms of our vibe, our brand, our style, in terms of career, in terms of our public image, our reputation, our goals. You know, there could definitely be a little bit of an exotic, eccentric, electric shift there where we kind of just want to break out and, you know, sh do something new, show a new side of ourselves, show a new side of our vibe or style, etc. So that is what I'm seeing for you as a Leo rising. Let me know down below if you could see these things happening this month. I would really love to know. Come back and watch throughout. Let me know what happens. I would really, really, really love to hear what happens for you guys so we can kind of compare and contrast this month, like I said. And I will see you guys in my next one. I love you. Have a beautiful month. Alrighty, Virgo BB, hello. Let's go ahead and get into what is coming for you for March 2023, this big ass mother effing month that we have. Okay, darling. So we start off March with a really positive influence, a really positive energy of Venus and Jupiter, the two benefics coming into a conjunction with the planet of Chiron. And this is happening in your eighth house of finances, investments, business, your long-term financial goals, what you do with your money, where you're putting your money. Uh, potentially, this can sometimes bring up, you know, debt and money that you owe or money that's owed to you. So you could really get some really positive opportunities or some positive news or even have some positive connections that come in in terms of money, finances, business, things like this, debts, loans, investments, like something really opportunistic, I feel like is coming in that first part of the month, like the first week of March. But we also are going to have right around that first week of March, the first few days of March, Mercury and Saturn coming into their conjunction in your sixth house of work, health, and day-to-day -day routines, your day-to-day -day tasks. So this is also you possibly making a decision or some kind of plan or some kind of news that is kind of rooted in accountability responsibility or something serious that needs to be done or you getting very serious about maybe a plan for your health or a plan for your job or a strategy or something that's going to help you implement things in terms of your life and your day-to-day -day work maintenance health a little bit more it's like you're really kind of like biting the bullet and getting serious about something or there's some news or a conversation that comes in some new conversation or some new news that is going to help you get a little bit more serious focused and you know accountable in these areas in some way so that first week of the month is like I feel like, you know, even though, yes, there could be some seriousness to it, I feel like it's good though. It's like motivational. It's like 
yes, this is serious, or yes, I'm making this big decision, or I'm taking on this responsibility, or I have this plan or this strategy or this news comes in, but it's helping you push forward and really learn the lessons that Saturn has been trying to teach you these last few years in terms of your health, in terms of your work, in terms of you know, your boundaries with work, with health, you know, and the way in which you may not be in alignment with that, you know, the last few years. And so you've really had to learn what you demand, what you want, and the kind of respect and boundaries that you need to have or implement in terms of your day-to-day -day life, your day-to-day -day routines, your work life, your employees, your coworkers, your health, your boss, how you manage these different situations and also how you stay in good health in terms of your body and your routines and what routines work for you and just getting more structured there uh, and more organized in these areas. And so that first part of the week is like you having a lot of realizations or some information that's coming in that's going to help with that or add to that in some way. So I really like that for you. And then on the seventh, we have the big dog transit of the month happening, which is Saturn finally moving out of your sixth house, like we just talked about of health work, da daily routines and stuff and moving into your seventh house of relationships, intimate connections with other people, partners, you know, things like this, also other close connections, relationships or contractual agreements that you have with other people in your life, business partners, um, marriage partners, significant long-term, you know, uh, girlfriends or boyfriends or whatever, you know, this is going to be a massive, massive deal for you, Virgo. So listen the F up. <laughs> and I talked a lot more in depth about this in the uh, 2023 predictions for each, uh, for each rising sign. So if you haven't seen that, make sure to go watch that. So Saturn moving into your seventh house is definitely a massive, massive deal for you, Virgo, for the next like two and a half years. So this is a long-term cycle. It may not bring some of these things I'm going to talk about right away, but you will probably start noticing a shift this month and more of a focus towards your relationship. And as it starts building over time, um, you are about to learn a lot, a lot of lessons in terms of your relationships and what kind of relationships you want in your life your boundaries in terms of relationships, your, you know, what's imaginary to you and what, how can you bring your imaginary or like vision for your relationships into some kind of structure, into the physical, into some kind of physical reality or physical plan, right? Are you taking accountability and responsibility in your life in terms of your relationships or past relationships that you've had? Is your partner um, right for you, you know, like is the partner you're currently with right for you? What do you want out of your relationships? What do you want long term from your partners, from your relationships, from the people that you interact with? Like, how are these things all interconnected? How do they maybe even root back to, uh, you know, other things going on in your life? And then also, not only that, but because you're a Virgo ascendant, you know, which if you're watching this, this is more so for Virgo ascendants, but um, because you're a Virgo ascendant, Saturn is also going to be opposing your ascendant. So this is also going to be a time of a lot of lessons in terms of maturity within yourself, taking accountability, taking responsibility, owning up to your part in things and not just trying to escape it um, through other people or blaming other people or being the victim, etc. You know, and there could be certain areas in your life where you've done that in the past or where you're where you begin to do that now. And Saturn is really going to kind of push you to own up to your part in things. And it's also going to push you to mature in terms of yourself, your self image, your personality, how you dress, how you style yourself, how you present yourself, but also how you go about, you know, your relationships and connections with other people. And it's going to be a very serious time where, you know, if you are already with somebody, it doesn't mean that you're going to necessarily split up, but it is going to get serious. You're going to start thinking like, is this something that I can see myself in long term? Um, am I setting the correct boundaries here? Do I, what are my boundaries? What is my vision for this? Where is this going? Is this what I really want? Um, is this something that I, I really want to put the work into, you know, is this going anywhere? Like, where is this going? What's the next step, right? What do I really want in a partner? What do I really not want in a partner? Like all of these big, difficult questions in terms of relationships or difficult issues that you've had in terms of relationships um, over the last several, several years 
are going to start kind of coming up at this time. Now, again, this isn't gonna just completely all start in March where it's like all gonna hit at once. Like this is a long-term transit. So it's gonna be teaching you for like the next two and a half years. So it's not something that is gonna just you know, pile on top of you and overwhelm you all right now in March. It's just something like a theme that or a shift you could start noticing that starts happening in March where, you know, if you have a partner, you may start feeling like, you know, these bigger questions start coming in or um, you start, you know, especially over like the next few months, I would say is when you're really going to notice it. But some of you may notice a shift kind of right away, especially if you have your ascendant at like the very beginning of Virgo from, you know, zero degrees to you know five degrees you will probably already start feeling this early on in these first few months of saturn moving into pisces but it's going to really test your relationships and see how durable they are and see and and also you know show you what's not working and show you where you need to do some work on yourself or um on the relationship you know it's not so much about the other person although it can look like that at times you know but it's more so about what is this other person mirroring that's within you right and what you know what's your part like saturn wants you to address your part what's in your control what's in your responsibility and not be so focused on oh well they're not doing this or they're not doing that or if they could just act right if they could just do this right like it can come off like that at first, but it's really just showing you where something's not aligned for you or where you're not setting clear boundaries, right? Where you don't have boundaries or where you're in something that you don't really want to be in or where you begin to start seeing qualities that you want in a partner through qualities that, you know, other people have that you don't want right now anymore. You know, like you, you're going to just start asking a lot of like the difficult, serious questions. Like, how do you feel about marriage? How do you feel about your current relationship? what's the next level, you know, but if you're in a relationship that, you know, is aligned and that is actually a relationship that you feel is worth it, that you do want to put the work into and all of that, then it's just going to take your relationship to the next level, right? Um, where you get more serious. Maybe you move in together. Maybe you get married. Maybe, you know, whatever, like you decide to like step it up or, you know, put more work into it or take more responsibility. But it could also be a time where, you know, Saturn requires you to put in more work, right? Um, because of maybe issues that you're having, or maybe there's a certain, you know, distance that begins to happen between you two um, that needs to be resolved. Or maybe your partner, you know, all of a sudden is like, you know what, like, I have this, you know, my job is relocating me. And so now it's going to be long distance or something like either way, like those are just examples, not to say that they're all going to be exactly what happens to you. Um, but they're just examples of like situations that could arise that force you to put more work into your relationships and grow up in terms of your relationships and mature. And I'm just getting out of this transit. And I can say that for me, it, it definitely was difficult in terms of relationships at times. And I had to face a lot of really difficult, hard, long-term questions throughout the transit. Um, and But at the same time, it was really beneficial because I really learned my boundaries in terms of other people. Uh, like what's my responsibility, what's my part, what I'm accountable for, and what I'm not accountable for. And that in itself is freeing because yes, it can suck to own up to shit that you know, you don't want to own up to or to, to own your part and all of that and be mature and be an adult about shit. But it also is freeing because you also see where you were taking on other someone else's shit that wasn't yours to take on, where you were making someone else's part your fault or your responsibility when really it wasn't like it's their part and it's for them to figure out and it's none of your fucking business. Right. Like so. I had to learn that a lot in terms of relationships, in terms of, you know, growing up. And, it, and I had to raise my standards as well in terms of relationships. Like, this is how I'm not going to be treated. Um, this is how I want respect in relationships. Like, this is what I'm not going to put up with. This is what I do want. You know, like I had to really learn a lot in terms of what I wanted in terms of a partner and significant other and expected in terms of a partner and significant other and where I was, you know, um, and not even just that, not even just a partner or significant other, but also friends, like also friendships, right? Like where do you need certain boundaries and um, in terms of these areas of life, right? Where are you settling? Where are you playing small? Where are you not seeing your full potential in some of these areas? And Saturn's really, really gonna be teaching you about these things over the next few years. So 
just be prepared for that. It moves in on the 7th. Again, you may not feel something drastic on that day, uh, but you will start noticing a lot of relationship themes begin to start coming up and it's a time of really solidifying what you want and what's right for you, what's aligned with you in terms of relationships while also growing up yourself and maturing yourself and getting serious about you know, doing the work on you and on your relationships and the people in your life, the people you're connected to. So anyway, so that is what's really big happening for this month. And then after that, from like the 12th to the 14th, we are going to have Mars um, in your 10th house squaring Neptune for the final time <laughs> uh, in your seventh house. So this has happened a few other times over like the last six months or so. And so this could bring up something or a theme or a pattern or a situation that's already been brought up a couple times over the last six months. So, but this is to resolve it. This is to face it. This is to transmute it, transcend it, let it go, accept it, surrender, forgive it. You know, whatever works for you. It depends on you and your particular individual situation and scenario. But um, this is going to be something that really comes up in terms of, again, your relationships, like you having maybe certain realizations in your relationships or becoming aware of your relationships, something going on in your relationships or your partner, you know, the other person or other people in your life, you know, something happening with them and it's somehow being in conflict with your career, with your long-term goals, with your future, with what you want, with, you know, you know, certain paths that you're trying to travel in terms of your future, where you're going, your goals, your career, your reputation, potentially authority figures as well. And so there could be a little bit of confusion that comes up here um, where you've been maybe trying to kind of, you know, avoid something or neglect something or, um, you know, like escape something in terms of this area. Um, or somebody in your life has been trying, has been not very clear with you about, you know, your future, your goals, or if they share those same goals or whatever. And so like, this is going to bring this up and it could bring a lot of tension or a lot of confusion or something like that. But this is for it to finally be resolved for you to finally face something or something to finally be, you know, to finally get clear, um, for you to kind of cut through the bullshit and be like, okay, no, like I'm not going to continue to, to, um, put up with bullshit about this anymore. Like we're just going to cut cut to the chase here, right? Be a little bit more direct, etc. And then right after that, from the 15th to the 17th, we will have a beautiful uh, conjunction between the Sun, Mercury, and Neptune in your seventh house of Pisces. So again, something really big here is happening in your relationships mid-month. It's like this sense of awareness, this sense of making sense of something that has felt maybe hard to grasp for a while, um, this sense of clarity, this sense of, you know, potentially even like a, a massive revelation or epiphany or an awakening or a download or something. Now, this could be that another person in your life is experiencing this as well. And maybe not so much you, like maybe your partner or a good friend or a business partner or something like they're having this ma massive moment or have this massive news or this massive realization that's happening with them. Um, that is helping them make sense of certain things. And so that's something else that could potentially happen in the middle of the month. So then from the 16th to the 17th, we're going to have Venus in Aries in your eighth house squaring Pluto and Capricorn in your fifth house. So this could bring up some tension in terms of shared finances, resources, investments, money, and your goals with money and wealth and how you're building that or going about that, or, you know, certain ideas or desires that you have in terms of money and investments, taxes as well, um, versus some kind of tense, deep, or, you know, transformative conflict or changes when it comes to children or, um, dating or something like that. It's kind of like, you know, you may have like these plans, but maybe somebody else in your life that you're sharing resources or finances with, it's like they have something else going on. And so it starts to kind of feel like, um, you know, like it's what you desire for yourself is going against like, you know, something that's like more solid or set in stone and it's like difficult to change or you don't like it or you feel a little bit held back by it. And so this could bring up like a power struggle or a conflict um, in that area. So you do want to watch out for that from like the 16th to the 17th, because that could definitely be something that you see that kind of comes up here. So then from there, we are going to have, um, 
Pluto finally moving into Aquarius for the first few months of this transit. Um, it's only going to be in there for a few months this year, but it's still going to move in nonetheless. And that's going to be our sixth house. So this is going to really, really be the start or a glimpse into the next several decades of the underpinnings of and the structure and the, the underpinnings of the structure and the system of how you go about work, your health, your body, taking care of yourself, maintenance, your actual job, employees and, and you know, co-workers, etc. This is going to be a deep transformational shift in the systems of your day-to-day -day routines, your day-to-day -day work, your day-to-day -day job, your day-to-day maintenance, health, etc. And so that is going to start becoming, you know, like this, the next few months are going to be a glimpse into that. So you could notice some, some deep questions starting to emerge or some changes that start to happen in terms of, you know, your ideas about work, about your health, about how you go about these things, you know, like Saturn has been here. So you've already been dealing with difficulty here and, and having to face kind of difficult questions in these areas. But Pluto coming in is really going to change things. So the next big thing, Virgo, is that Mars is finally moving out of your 10th house of Gemini, where it has been literally since last summer in 2022, like August, I believe, last year. Okay, so it's been a long Mars and Gemini transit in your 10th house where you've really had to get you know, <laughs> really had to focus on a lot of change in terms of your career, your direction in life. It's probably felt very confusing, a lot of different options, considering a lot of different possibilities and going back and forth between what you really want, what you don't really want, and probably maybe even being very busy in terms of your career, et cetera. So now we are moving into Mars and Cancer on March 25th. And that is your 11th house sector of friends, groups, acquaintances, collaborations, your social life, and things like that. So you may find yourself branching out more uh, to people or you know, joining certain cliques of people, certain like-minded people, focusing on marketing, focusing on networking in some way, or really honed in on certain aspirations, hopes, and you know, things like that that you have for your life and where you can find certain connections or people that can you know, kind of open doors for you or bring in opportunities into your life in some way. But there also may be some tension as well in terms of your social life, in terms of dealing with other people and things like that. So you do want to watch out for conflicts and things like that when it comes to dealing with other people, uh, especially with anything that relates financially. Um, but you could also notice that some opportunities come in through other people as well. So watch out for that as well. So then at the very end of the month, we have a really, uh, we have some really cool, interesting transits happening from the 28th to the 31st. We're gonna have Mercury and Jupiter coming into their conjunction in the eighth house. Um, in your eighth house. So this is going to be a time where you're going to be seeing the bigger picture in terms of your finances. So a lot of the tension that you may have been feeling earlier in the month and in the middle of the month in terms of money, income, resources, finances, taxes, etc. Um, this could be a time where you are maybe given an opportunity or an opportunity comes in or you're starting to formulate a plan or actual practical steps for how to move forward in a situation and you're seeing the potential, you're seeing the opportunity, you're seeing the bigger picture. Okay towards the end of the month with that. So that's really good. And then also we're going to have Venus coming into her conjunction with Uranus in your ninth house. So this could be, you know, some exciting new relationships or friendships that come in that share similar ideals or beliefs um, that as you do. Um, this could be even that you're introduced to um, a more pleasurable belief system or a philosophy or more fulfilling philosophy. You could be feeling very lit up or passionate or, um, you know, like just in this state of fulfillment with certain things that you may be learning or educating yourself on or studying, or there could be a surprise kind of exciting opportunity for travel or, you know, learning something new or teaching or learning in some way. So that's going to happen at the very end of the month. So that is what I'm seeing for you this month, Virgo. Let me know down below if any of this resonates, if you could see any of this happening for you in the month of March. I'd really, really love to hear your feedback. Thank you guys so, so much for watching this. And we're going to go on to the next night. Alrighty, my lovely Libra Risings, this one is for you. 
for the month of March 2023. So March for you, Libra, looks like it's going to be a large focus on your relationships and what you share and value or have together within those relationships and connections in your life. If you share resources, finances, things like that, and also just other people in general, it's going to be a very social time for you. But you're also going to be feeling a lot more creative and tapped into your day-to-day -day routines, your day-to-day -day job or your day-to-day -day work duties, your day-to-day -day health. So this is going to be a really great time for like cleansing, purification, detox, um, you know, just getting your energy right in terms of your day-to-day -day shit that you do, you know, like this is definitely going to be a time where you're also feeling more creative. You could be, you know, adding in more creativity, more imagination into your day-to-day -day routines, your health, your body, um, the type of work that you do, you know, it's going to be a very, very creative time while also a lot of opportunity and a lot of connection is coming in in terms of other people, relationships, and things like that. And then towards the end of the month, there's going to be a pretty big focus on career that begins to happen and your work in general. And so this is kind of the, the brief overview for you, Libra. But as we start off the month from the, you know, like the first few days of March, we have a lot of opp opportunity for growth and expansion and healing um, coming in and just beneficial energy to kind of move past certain insecurities or you know, wounds that you may have had previously because we're going to have Venus, your ruling planet, coming into her conjunction with Jupiter and Chiron those first few days of the month. And this is happening in your seventh house of relationships where, you know, Venus doesn't really like to be here, but still her joining Jupiter is still a really nice, <laughs> really nice transit. So this could definitely bring in some mending or reconciliation or opportunities in terms of or some expansion and growth and potential and optimism in terms of your relationship life, um, your marriage, your connections with other people, certain agreements that you have with other people, certain connections that you have, your the dynamics within your relationship. Like this would be a really great opportunity to go on like a learning venture with your partner or study a new belief system or theory or practice with your partner or something like that or something really great may happen for your partner you know what i mean like maybe they get you know some kind of you know raise with work or something like that you know like there's just definitely a lot of really great uh fun beautiful energy coming in here that's very expansive and opportunistic and that's really going to help um you or your partner maybe overcome some old struggles wounds or insecurities from the past right with chiron being there as well so it's like you're finally seeing the bigger picture you're kind of seeing you know you're being more optimistic in terms of something that may have been a little bit more difficult before and i really really like that for you now we also have around that same time mercury coming into its conjunction with saturn and aquarius in your fifth house. So with that could come some like, you know, conversations or news or something in terms of your love life, the romance department, in terms of having fun or doing something that you love or getting more serious about, you know, creating something in your life or getting more serious about your intimacy, like the intimate department um, or dating or the types of people that you're dating, the types of friends that you have or even it could involve children or sexuality or something like that or creative projects just really where you find your joy and you're trying to get more structured here and come up with a serious plan here um, or there could be some news or information or a realization that you have at the beginning of the month to do with those things too and how they're kind of affecting your life long term etc and so that is the first part of the month. Now, then we get to the seventh, okay? And the seventh is a big deal because Saturn is finally moving out of your fifth house where it has been kind of uh, <laughs> quote unquote cock blocking you for uh, the last few years now in terms of love, intimacy, sexuality, passion, um, dating, things like that. Like that area of life has probably gotten a lot more serious or you've had to grow up or mature in these areas a lot more, add more structure here, or do a lot more work to get something out of it or to have some kind of fun or to, you know, whatever, connect. And so it's probably felt a little bit draining or heavy in this department, but now Saturn is finally leaving your fifth house of Aquarius and moving into your sixth house of Pisces, where the focus is really going to shift towards your 
work life, okay? So your work life, your day-to-day -day routines, your health, the things that you're doing, the tasks and duties that you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. This is gonna be time where you're getting a lot more structured, where you're really bringing your visions into reality, where you're really creating like a plan, you're bringing the unrealistic into the realistic, right? Like you're bringing your visions, you're bringing your ideas, you're bringing your dreams into reality and creating a plan with them, especially in terms of your work and the things that you feel responsible for or the duties that you have, the tasks and schedules that you follow. Um, so this could definitely be a time where you take on a lot more work or you become more responsible in some area. Maybe you get a promotion, but that comes with a lot of extra responsibility. Um, this could be a time where you, if your job is not giving you a sense of creativity or it's not giving you a sense of fulfillment or, um, you know, something along those lines, if it doesn't feel like it's really adding to your life in some kind of meaningful and purposeful way, then you could find that it starts feeling stale, boring, draining. And so you may end up wanting to get into a different kind of work, you know, like a new kind of work or a new kind of job or something like that. You're like, you're going to be really thinking about the long term and how you can sustain, um, you know, that, that feeling of fulfillment and bringing your creation to life, bringing, you know, more vision and creativity um, and flow into your workspace and into your health even, um, and how you can sustain that, right? And build like a, a, a structure for things to flow into uh, when it comes to your work life and your health life. And so these are some things that could come up. Saturn in your sixth can mean that you are having to get a lot more disciplined and work a little bit harder to keep up with you know, a lot of the responsibilities or a lot of the things that are going on, you know, it could bring up, you know, um, energetic things as well with Pisces being in your sixth house. Like, do you have an energy outlet for your body, for your health, right? Like how is your energy affecting your health? Like those are going to be really big things that I think are going to come up for you as a Libra rising and how can you structure your life and, and have like a certain practice in place, a certain routine in place to really hone in on, these issues because with Pisces being your sixth house, it's all interconnected, your health, your work, your sleep schedule, your diet, the task and the duties that you're completing on a day-to-day -day basis, how are they fulfilling you or how are they draining you um, is gonna kind of be the question or how are they exhausting you? You know, like, are is this really fulfilling for you? Are you really able to like bring, like ground your dreams into reality? And this is gonna really challenge you to do that. Now it could be difficult at times over the next couple years, right? Like this is a transit that's a long-term transit. We're talking like the next two and a half years here. So this isn't just March, it starts in March. Doesn't mean you're gonna notice all of this right away, but you could start asking yourself some long-term questions this month, you know, that start kind of popping up or even next month or the month after. But there's definitely going to be more of a commitment towards your work life, your health, your energy, that's going to be required from you to really keep things in a flow, right? Or to really feel fulfilled or to really feel free. And you're gonna be also um, learning a lot about your boundaries in these areas, your limits in these areas and um, things like that as well. So that is Saturn in your sixth. Briefly, I talked a lot more about this in your 2023 horoscope for your rising sign. I have a whole video on that if you wanna go watch that. But so the next thing that's happening in March that I wanna talk about here is we're also going to have Mars uh, squaring Neptune for the final time from your ninth house to your sixth house. And this is gonna happen from like the 12th to the 14th. So Mars is in your ninth house in Gemini. It's been there for like the last several months now since like August of last year um, because it retrograded there in October, the end of October. So you've been really doing a lot in terms of your education, um, you know, what you wanna learn in the world. You've been really kind of maybe rethinking your belief systems, rethinking your educational pursuits, rethinking what you wanna to go to school for, what you wanna learn more about, what you wanna experience, courses or classes or different alternative learning methods that you wanna look at or address, you know? And so Mars here has been really causing a lot of focus in this area. It could have also brought in a lot of conflicting ideas, a lot of contradiction. Um, you kind of seeing things in different ways and from many different sides, conflicts or debates, etc. And so with that though, Mars is also going to be squaring Neptune, like I said, from the 12th to the 14th and Neptune's in your sixth house. So this looks like to me, like there could be a lot of confusion um, that has maybe even come up before that is coming up for the last time 
when it comes to what you believe or your educational pursuits or the experiences that you want to have in the world, the actions that you want to take in terms of what you feel is morally right for you or what feels purposeful for you or what feels meaningful for you versus maybe your health or your day-to-day lifestyle, your day-to-day routines. And so with this, this could definitely be like maybe you've been neglecting something, you know, maybe you've been putting something off, maybe you've been escaping something um, on a day-to-day basis, you know what I mean? Maybe your lifestyle has gotten a little bit too messy or whatever, but you have these like big lingering questions of like, okay, like I've, that you've been maybe trying to escape or this certain conflict or these certain conflicting ideals about life and about the world and about why you're here and about what you want to do that you've been maybe trying to like escape. And this is just one way it could play out, um, but maybe even trying to avoid this, right? And you've been trying to avoid this by resorting to escapism tendencies or maybe drinking a little too much um, on a day-to-day basis or, you know, in your life or something like that, you know, or just kind of trying to like, you know, like not face something. And so this is an energy that is kind of confronting, that is kind of like, hey, are you gonna face this? Are you gonna face these bigger questions that you have about your life and about why you're here and what you wanna do and you know, like what you're meant to do and what feels purposeful if you've been feeling like, oh, I need to go back to school or I need to change my major or I need to take this course or whatever, but you've been kind of putting it off because of all this other stuff going on in your day-to-day life and, and because of that, it's led you to escaping or neglecting or avoiding or whatever or even feeling like victimized, you know what I mean? This could also be like, certain issues that are going on in the world that have caused you to like want to escape as well or avoid things or not do what you really want to do because of those issues and so this could play out a lot of different ways but this is going to come up it really deals with your ideals your faith your ideologies you know and what you want to experience that's meaningful and purposeful for you in this life travel education versus your day-to-day reality, your day-to-day schedules, your day-to-day lifestyle, your work, your day-to-day routines, your health, right? So it's like, you know, maybe the job that you have is somehow conflicting with these higher ideals or your belief systems in some way, or maybe there are rules there, you know, because the the ninth house can be like rules and legalities and things like that as well. Um, So it's kind of like maybe there hasn't been a lot of you know, like you're not really in agreement with like the purpose or the mission of this job that you have, but you've just been kind of avoiding it, you know, to not rock the boat or whatever, right? Like, so it's like something here is going to need to be faced um, in order for things to become clear. So either accept it, either face it, either assert yourself, either assert your ideas, either, you know, something has to be faced here in order for things to change, basically. And it looks like a lot of people are going to do that because right after that, from the 15th to the 17th, we have a beautiful triple conjunction of Mercury, the Sun, and Neptune happening in your sixth house, again, of Pisces. And so it's like there is some kind of forgiveness or there is some kind of like you know, awareness or awakening or revelation that happens here in terms of, you know, this, like a higher sense of purpose or a higher sense of meaning in your job or in your day-to-day reality or in your lifestyle. It's like something is finally starting to make sense. You're starting to see something very clearly, you know, um, it's like a, a detox or a cleanse or a purification process where it's like all the bullshit begins to kind of clear out and you begin to finally be able to see something clearly and embody something fully. And it may even feel like you have like help from higher realms or the universe or whatever doing that. It's a very magical, divine and spiritual kind of energy um, that we're easily able to understand and make sense of that we're kind of downloading or channeling or whatever like it's a beautiful beautiful energy from the 15th to the 17th so watch out for that but we do have one difficult thing happening right around that time and that is from the 16th to the 17th venus and aries in your seventh house is going to square pluto and capricorn in your fourth house right before she moves into taurus now this is a big deal for you because venus is your ruling planet so you're really going to be feeling this libra this could bring up some power struggles in terms of your relationships or your partner, 
um, and family, right? Or home life, personal life, the past, things like that. So this could definitely be some control issues or something kind of being revealed or something intense that's kind of testing your relationship with another person or your friendship with another person, your marriage, your partner, you know, something like that, like something from the past or something to do with family, something to do with home life, you know, things like that. So this could be a kind of an edgy energy that feels you know, um, very intense and kind of dark or could bring up some fears, you know, things like that. Um, but again, it's like, where do we need to assert ourselves and where do we need to also be in our power in this situation, right? So, but after that, again, it looks like things start kind of getting better because we have the new moon in Aries on the 21st, which I'm going to do a separate video on kind of starting this new fresh energy in your seventh house of relationships. And then we're going to also have Pluto moving out of Capricorn and moving into Aquarius on the 23rd. So it's finally moving out of your fourth house for a few months where it's been for over a decade now. Libra, where you've had Pluto in your fourth house, like just really uh, bringing in a lot of deep transformational change in terms of your family, your home life, your foundations, you know, your personal life, your past, just uprooting a lot of things there. So it's probably felt like there's been a lot of deep change there and like like over the last decade since like 2008. But now it's gonna move into your fifth house. And this is gonna be about, uh, you know, your love life, your dating life, again, um, where you find joy. Now it's only gonna be here for a few months this year. So you're only gonna get a brief preview, but this could be a lot of deep change in terms of, you know, what you love, how you go about finding joy, love, passion in your life. This could be a lot of deep change in terms of what you find fun, what you find attractive, what you're interested in, your sexuality, a lot of deep change in terms of children, romance, all of that. So it's definitely going to be a time that's going to bring up, you know, certain fears that need to be faced in these areas, old toxicity that needs to be healed and transmuted and alchemized and let go of. Um, things like this. So that is definitely something. But again, it's only going to be a short glimpse this year. Um, it's not like not all of that's going to happen at once or right away. It's a long term transit. So it's like a long term period of time that we're going to be on and off kind of dealing with certain lessons here. So anyways, and then on the 25th, we have Mars moving into Cancer and out of your ninth house of Gemini finally, and it's going to move into your 10th house of Cancer. So this is going to be a time for the next couple of months with Mars in your 10th, where you're going to get very, very focused on your career, on your future, on what you want out of life, on the direction that you're going in, your long-term goals, your long-term achievements, you know, the places that you want to go, your future, like what are, what direction are you going in? Who's steering the wheel of your life, right? And that's really what this is going to be about, where you have to get a little bit more personal or reveal more personal things in terms of your career, be a little bit more vulnerable. It could also bring up potentially some conflicts or, um, you know, some stress or a lot of busyness in terms of your career or with authority figures. So you do want to watch out about that too. Um, but overall, it's going to be a very work and career focused time. And you're going to be really focused on the direction that you want to go in your life, what's going to feel safe, secure, and stable for you emotionally in your career and what you really want to do and how you want to like nurture your career, how you want to nurture your goals, your long-term goals and all of, <clears throat> and all of that. Sorry. <laughs> so the last few days of the month from the 28th to the 31st, we will have um, Mercury and Jupiter coming into their conjunction in the sign of Aries. Again, your opposite sign of relationships, which I think is going to bring a lot of bigger ideals that you've had or, you know, bigger inspirations that you've had in terms of your relationships um, down to earth. It's like things are going to start making sense. You're going to start maybe having a plan with your partner to about certain goals that you guys have or your partner is going to start you know, really having a plan to achieve certain goals or taking action on certain goals that they have and <clears throat> taking action on certain plans that they have, like long-term expansive big ideas that they have. This could be a really great time for big conversations and you know, conversations that bring a lot of opportunity and optimism and potential. And then at the same time, right around that time, the last few days of the month, we're also gonna have Venus in uh, Taurus conjunct Uranus, which is your eighth house. So this could also bring some excitement or exciting opportunities exciting uh, situations or people um, coming in to do with shared finances, resources, relationships, and what you share with other people, investments, business, 
things like that. So it could be some exciting money coming in or, um, you know, some, you know, something exciting happening or something kind of out of the blue. Uh, but that's also very, you know, that's also like very good. And that also feels very good, basically. So that is what I'm seeing for you, Libra, for uh, the month of March. Let me know down below if you could see a lot of these things happening or if they are already relating. Definitely let me know down below. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. And I will see you guys in the next one. Alrighty, Scorpio darling, welcome to your March 2023 horoscope for the month ahead. Let's get into it. So Scorpio, this month for you, it's a really, really big month, but this month for you in particular seems to be really, really centered around your passions, your heart's desires, your interests, the things that light you up inside, that get your energy moving, the things that light your soul up. Like that is really what this month is about. Now on top of it, it's also very much about your work, the work that you do on a day-to-day -day basis, the work that you do in the world, the long-term, you know, commitment that you have in uh, when it comes to your work when it comes to your health as well like how you are taking action in terms of your work and health and your day-to-day -day task duties and routines so that's the other really big part of this month for you so let's go ahead and get into it the first week of March Scorpio we are going to have Venus and Jupiter coming into their conjunction in your sixth house of your work health and day-to-day -day routines they're also going to be conjunct Chiron so it looks as if there could be a lot of realizations a lot of healing a lot of expansion in terms terms of moving past old wounds, old securities that have been really like setting you back in terms of taking action on the things that really light you up or the things that really get you motivated. It's like you are finally moving past a certain insecurity or a certain wound or seeing it from like a higher perspective this first week of March and really seeing, you know, where maybe you can you know, resolve some tension that you've been having in this area in the workplace um, with your body, with your health, with your physical health, with, you know, things like this exercise or, um, you know, certain tasks that you have at work, you know, where you've been kind of feeling insecure or old wounds have been coming up from the past or from your childhood even that have been holding you back here, you know, and keeping you kind of almost like a slave or feeling like a slave in some area of your life or feeling like burnt out or exhausted or whatever. And so there's like a renewal of energy coming in here, an expansive, opportunistic, uh, what's the other word I'm looking for? Mending, healing kind of energy, like a resolving kind of energy that's really showing you your full potential in this area of your life. And so that's gonna be really exciting, but we're also gonna have Mercury conjunct Saturn that first week of uh, March as well. And this is happening in your fourth house of home and family and your personal life, your past. So this could be some news, this could be, you know, um, an important discussion, an important decision or conversation happening in terms of your home, your family, your personal life, your past. That could be coming up that first week as well. So on the 7th, we have the really big transit of the month happening, which is Saturn, Big Daddy Saturn, moving into Pisces. And for you, this is your fifth house again of sexuality, romance, intimacy, what makes your soul sing, your creativity, your creative visions, you know, the things that you're really passionate about. And so you're finally going to have Saturn moving out of your fourth house where it's been for the last several years of you know your home your family your personal life your foundations your past it's been a really restrictive energy going on there a really heavy energy going on there a lot of consequential energy there having to put in a lot of hard work or really getting serious about your roots and your foundations and things like that but you're finally like accumulating these lessons learning these lessons and now saturn is going to move into your fifth house so you're going to get very very serious about your creative visions your creative interests your passions, your hobbies, intimacy, sexuality, romance, dating, fun, what your soul wants, what your soul loves to do, children, you know, things like this are going to become a really serious focus for you and your life uh, in the coming years as Saturn is moving into your fifth house in March, starting in March. So the next big thing that we have in March is Mars, your ruling planet, is going to square Neptune from like the 12th to the 14th. So Mars is going to be in Gemini in your eighth house of <laughs> really transformative, powerful experiences along with finances, shared resources, 
you know, anything that you share with another person, business, investments, loans, debt. So you've had a lot of focus, a lot of drama, a lot of changes going on in this area the last like several months since around August of 2022. There's maybe been a lot of stress, a lot of conflict, a lot of challenges, a lot of issues, a lot of, you know, weighing out different options and changes and looking at all kinds of different sides and options to do with, you know, this area of life. But Mars is going to be squaring Neptune from here. And again, Neptune's in Pisces in your fifth house of love, romance, and your heart's desires. And so what could be going on here, Scorpio, is that you may have a lot of, you know, you may have some challenges coming up in terms of shared resources, shared finances, and maybe children or passions or projects or things that you're interested in, your heart's desires. And these things could be clashing in some way. There could be a conflict here in some way. Now, this could not be, this may not be the first time this situation has come up. It could have come up previously over the last several months. Um, but there could also be something that you've been kind of avoiding or trying to escape or that you've been kind of neglecting here that's been trying to get your attention. And so this is like a time where it's like, okay, I need to cut out the bullshit. I need to really take action or take charge on some of these things and quit trying to escape it while also forgiving and accepting and letting certain things go that are out of your control. This is kind of like getting really real about what's in your control and what isn't, you know, what you're capable of and, and what you can do versus, you know, what you need to have faith with or what you need to kind of you know, let go of, right? And so that could be something you're experiencing from like the 12th to the 14th. And then right after that, on the 15th to the 17th, we're gonna have the Sun, Mercury, and Neptune coming into a really, really beautiful conjunction in your fifth house. So it's like this newfound awareness, this newfound awakening, this newfound path is really illuminated for you around the 15th to the 17th, where it's like you're beginning to make sense of things. You're beginning to see things clearly, like the fog is clearing, the confusion, the bullshit is all kind of starting to clear and you're starting to get really like, you're starting to see a lot of what it is that you actually desire, what your heart actually wants, what your soul actually needs from you. Like um, you're starting to maybe feel a lot more faith. You're starting to feel a lot more belief in maybe yourself or belief in something that you love, you know? Um, this could also bring in, again, topics of romance, intimacy, children as well. Um, or this could be like a new creative vision that is born, you know, like something is happening here that's, that's really magical and divine from the 15th to the 17th with that. So watch out for that time period. And then from around like the 16th and 17th, we are going to also have Venus uh, in Aries, squaring Pluto in Capricorn. This is going to happen from your third to your sixth house. So to me, this looks like there could be some conflict power struggles or intensity that starts to kind of heat up around that time in terms of your workplace or your work schedule or your work routines or your health routines, etc. Um, versus your lifestyle or what you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis or errands that you have to run or your environment, you know, uh, this could definitely be a time where you are kind of feeling a little bit like, you know, you may be like in like a toxic environment or you may be kind of triggered by, you know, certain energies that are going on around you. Um, this could also be a time where you are really kind of rethinking or, or um, getting somewhat triggered by your lifestyle in some way. Like this could be kind of like a tempting transit as well that could tempt you into a lifestyle that you know feels really unhealthy or that is just not for you. And it's like, you know, you have your own things that you want to do individually um, or you have your own sense of self, but you know, there's something going on maybe around you environmentally or a power struggle or something like that that is kind of like you know bringing in some intensity or bringing in a certain fear potentially as well um this could be something like you need to speak up about or uh this could kind of you know test your boundaries in terms of what you're willing to put up with or what you're willing to reconcile this this definitely looks like a testy energy coming in around the 16th or 17th or you may be potentially facing a certain fear um, as well to move you farther in terms of your health your fitness your job your work etc and so that's something else that i see here so on the 23rd we have the infamous pluto moving into the sign of aquarius uh, which is your fourth house of home family your past you know the, the your personal life 
your living situation, right? And so this definitely is going to give us a glimpse over the next few months that Pluto is in your fourth house of what needs to be restructured and changed, especially things going on underneath the surface or things that, you know, have been kind of stored or uh, like suppressed in terms of your past, in terms of your home life, in terms of your family, and what needs to be restructured and just changed there, you know, completely. And so it's not all going to happen within the next few months. It's just going to give you like a preview of, you know, some big changes that may start beginning in terms of your home and family life and in terms of your foundation, your past, and things like that. Um, to set you free and to really kind of show you where your power is and show you how to alchemize some of these, you know, issues that may arise, right? And so that is something that's happening on the 23rd. And then on the 25th, your ruling planet Mars is going to move out of your eighth house of investments, business, finances, you know, power struggles and intensity, intense life changes and things like that. And it's going to move into your ninth house of higher education, educational pursuits, teaching and learning, foreign travel, philosophy, ideologies, things like this. And so that's definitely going to start becoming a time where you are really focused on those types of things. Like where are you going in the world? What kind of experiences do you want to have? You know, what kind of places do you want to see? What kind of ideologies or uh, topics do you want to learn about? You know, and you're just really going to be putting a lot of energy into nurturing where you're going in this world and, and what feels purposeful and meaningful to you, what feels moral or right to you. And so that is definitely something you could start noticing um, after the 25th and over the next couple of months as Mars moves through your ninth. So then from the 28th to the 31st, we have a few really interesting transits. We're going to have Mercury conjunct Jupiter and Aries in your sixth house of, again, work, health, day-to-day -day routines. And um, so that could definitely be you finally kind of coming up with a plan on how you want to move forward in this area and, you know, ideas and strategies and practical actions that you want to take towards bigger goals that you have. And then on the from the 30th to the 31st, we're going to have Venus conjunct Uranus and Taurus in your seventh house. So this could be a lot of really surprising, exciting um you know, kind of shakeups in your relationship departments that are, you know, that you're really feeling that kind of bring in like a new, interesting, unique energy. Okay, so this could be someone new that you're meeting that's really exciting and uh, really unique and different. Or if you're already in a relationship, this could be you and your partner kind of spicing things up, shaking things up, or just having that feeling of like, let's try something different. Let's experiment. Let's, you know, let's shake things up, you know, let's get a little bit rebellious. Let's, you know, go against the go against the grain a little bit, you know. Um, so there could definitely be an energy coming in there uh, with that at the very end of the month. So that is what I'm seeing this month for you, Scorpio. Let me know down below if any of this sounds like you could definitely see it happening. <laughs> um, or if you do start seeing it happening, come back and let me know, check in. I'd love to hear it. You can come back and watch us throughout the month. Um, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. Alrighty, Sagittarius, welcome to your March 2023 horoscope. If you hear anything in the background, it's because my washer is going and it's kind of loud at the moment, so please just excuse that. But welcome to March, very Pisces season, right? So anyway, uh, yeah, March is a really big month. We have a lot of really big changes happening, so be prepared, buckle up. And March for you, uh, Sagittarius, looks like a month that is very centered around your personal life, your family, your past, maybe some nostalgia, maybe some reminiscing, you know, your home life, your living situation, those that are close to you and just like your, your inner world, you know, like really what's going on internally, what's going on emotionally, where, you know, what's going on with your foundation. And also it's a lot of reconnecting to the things that you love, to the things that really just light your soul up, to the things that really motivate you and give you a sense of passion, give you a sense of purpose, you know, um, things like that, love, romance, maybe even children. And then there's also going to be some other things that we're going to go over that are also a really big focus for you this month. So we start off March, the first few days of March with Venus conjunct Jupiter, which is a really beautiful energy. And this is also going to be basically conjunct Chiron as well in your fifth house of really what lights your soul up. What are you interested in? What are you passionate about? Like really reconnecting to your heart space, your heart center, and what really gets you going, you know, like what 
feels creative, what feels possible, like what feels um, like a potential, what like reconnecting to this optimistic space of doing what you love, right? Really doing what you love and um, getting back into that, you know, getting back into doing the things that really make you happy, that really create a space of like fun in your life, that create a space of gratitude in your life, that create love in your life, that create passion and pleasure and, you know, maybe getting back into hobbies or, you know, really also this is really great for romance, intimacy, sexuality, dating and things like that as well. This could also be very benefic and um, bringing in maybe some opportunity in terms of your children as well or fun activities that you're doing. So I really like that the first part of the month. And then we're also going to have Mercury conjunct Saturn in your third house, which could definitely be some big revelations or realizations in terms of your lifestyle, your environment, um, maybe some serious conversations that need to be have or had around boundaries or where you have your boundaries in terms of friends and people in your life and the environments that you are in and the things that you think you know. It's like you're getting back to like what you know is right for you, right? And maybe needing to solidify that in some way. And so, yeah, the first part of the month is really, really beautiful, a really beautiful energy. And it also is very healing in a lot of ways as well. And then on the seventh, we have Big Daddy Saturn leaving the sign of Aquarius where it's been for the last couple of years in your third house of your environment, your social life, you know, your kind of immediate social life and things like that. And it's gonna be moving into your fourth house of home, family, foundation, living situation, your personal life, your past and stuff like that. So this is gonna be very, very much about getting very serious, responsible, accountable, and um, kind of securing your home and family life and your foundations and what's really important to you, like what you really want your life to look like, the foundation that you want to expand upon in your life and like getting serious about that. Do you have a dream home, a dream vision for your home, a dream vision for your family, a dream vision for your personal life and things like that. And how are you going to build that without having a foundation first, right? That's really what Saturn is going to bring in. It's going to show you how to be more responsible here and really bring in these visions, these dreams into a structured form, right? Into matter, into reality, into a physical form, right? So you can really feel more free, right? So you can feel more free in your day-to-day -day life. So you can feel more free, you know, in your personal life and have a sense of fulfillment there, right? So that is what this is really gonna be about just in an overall gist. Um, so that's gonna happen on the seventh. And so, and this is gonna be a few year transit. So it's a long-term transit. So these are gonna be lessons you're learning over time, right? So the other uh, really cool thing that we have happening this month, um, well, it's not really cool actually, it's kind of a shit show, but it's Mars squaring Neptune for the final time. Okay, and so this is gonna happen from like the 12th to the 14th, uh, Mars and Gemini which is your seventh house is going to be squaring Neptune and Pisces, which is your fourth house. So there definitely could be some bullshit basically that comes up here around that time between your family, your personal life, your home life, your past versus your relationships and decisions, questions, conversations in your relationships. Maybe you've been kind of avoiding something or hiding something, or maybe you've been kind of trying to escape, you know, certain hard hitting or direct you know, questions or situations or decisions going on in your relationship life or in your relationships or with someone or with other people. And it's like, you can't deny this anymore. You can't escape this anymore. And so it's like, you kind of find the answer by like surrendering to it and just like facing it directly, right? Like facing the unknown directly, basically. And it's like, through that, you end up kind of going through this like really beautiful healing process because right after that, from the 15th to the 17th, we're gonna have the Sun, Mercury, and Neptune coming into their conjunction in your fourth house again. So it's like, maybe there's been something from your past or something going on in your personal life or something going on with your family or whatever that's been very confusing and like just very gray. Like it's been very foggy and it's been hard for you to really find, you know, a way to, um, deal with it or act on it or take action on it or be direct about it or you know maybe you know there's just been some tension there between your home life and your personal life and your family and your past and your relationships or other people right and so this is like the time where you're finally going to be able to maybe transcend that and find a way to face that and heal that and be direct about it and surrender to it while also like after the fact you end up being able to rise above it have all these really cool 
epiphanies, revelations, you know, maybe awakenings, and you're able to like take that moving forward. You're able to start making sense of things and things become very clear and you're able to like, and it kind of may even feel like, holy shit, like this is so liberating or there's like a lot of healing that's involved, a lot of like magical, divine, spiritual energy that ends up being involved because you are able to face this or move through this. Um, and also kind of have faith at the same time or just go into the unknown and, and trust. Like there definitely is like an issue of trust here that could come up around that time as well. And so, yeah, that is definitely what's kind of cool about this is even though there is that confusing kind of bullshit energy of Mars and Neptune, there's also this energy of like right after that kind of shows that a lot of people are going to feel better about the way they handle it this time. And so it's like, you know, whatever does come up, do what you feel is the right thing to do, you know, like do what you feel is, is the, you know, thing to do that's going to be in integrity and that in the long run is going to help you um, move past this and heal from this instead of continuing to maybe run from it or make up excuses or go around it, whatever. Um, so that is what I have to say about that time. So from right around the 17th, we're going to have Venus squaring Pluto though. And so Venus is in your fifth house and it's going to be squaring Pluto in your second house. So this could be a time where you're really wanting to do certain things that you love to do. Um, or you're maybe focused on dating or relationships or love or whatever, or just even hobbies that you have, interests that you have, things like that. But with that, you know, there could be some intensity or some fear or, you know, some, uh, <laughs> some temptation that arises in terms of your values or in terms of finances, money, resources, priorities, right? And so it's like, you know, maybe you're wanting to have fun and go do some things, but it's like, is that really, you know, something that is in your priorities or are you giving your power away by doing that, right? Like, so there's definitely going to be some, some of that that comes up here uh, around the 16th and 17th with Venus squaring Pluto. So do watch a little bit out for that around that time. So on the 23rd, Pluto is then going to enter Aquarius, which is your third house of what you know, your environment, um, your, the people, places, and things that you interact with, like on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, this can also rule, you know, your, your town, your neighborhood, siblings, cousins, relatives, neighbors, things like that. And um, yeah, just really like kind of like your immediate social life is another way to look at this. So with Pluto entering Aquarius in your third house, this could definitely show you a glimpse over these next few months of what Pluto and Aquarius could bring for you as a Sagittarius. Now it is in your third house, so it's not as crazy of a house for it to be in as some of the other signs, but it definitely could start bringing up deep questions, deep changes in terms of your environment, in terms of what you know, in terms of, you know, the wherever you are, maybe you start really having this like strong urge to move or get away. And again, with all this Piscean energy and Saturn moving into Pisces, it's like, uh, you know, how can I structure my, my dream life, my dream home or my, my dream vision for what I want in terms of my home and my family and things like that. So some of that could start come to could be like the case for some of you as Sag Risings. And then on the 25th, Mars is going to enter into the sign of Cancer and it's going to finally move out of your seventh house, Sag. So it's been in your seventh house for several months now since literally like August 2022 because it retrograded there. So you've had all these challenges and stresses and conflicts coming up in terms of your relationships. Like relationships have been a really busy subject for you for the last several months now. Other people, their drama, their shit, all of that. So with Mars finally moving out of your seventh, that area is going to start to get better. And Mars is then going to move into your eighth house of other people's money, business, investments, loans, um, your goals with your money, and also really transformative and deep experiences. And so that can really change your perspective on life or change where you're going or the, the, you know, the direction that you've been headed in. And so, um, these are some of the things you could notice though, after the 25th with Mars moving into your eighth house, definitely going to be a time where you're focusing a lot more of your energy on your finances, your shared finances, getting your shit together in terms of your finances, in terms of your resources, in terms of business, in terms of investments, in terms of debt, and also, you know, how that may relate 
to your family or how that may relate to certain bonds that you have with other people or how you may be taking action on that um, fueled by emotions, right? So this could also be a time where you cultivate or get into a protective energy as well in terms of um, money and business investments, finances and things like that, but also look at how you can um, continue to you know, create things in this area as well. So that is what I see for that. And then from the 28th to the 31st, we have some really cool transits happening at the very end of the month that I'm excited about. Mercury is gonna conjunct Jupiter and Aries, which is gonna give you more of a plan, more of a strategy, for taking action and going after your big ideas and big goals and the things that, you know, your potential, especially in terms of your passions and the things that you love and, um, you know, dating, romance, etc., whatever your heart desires. And then um, at the very end of the month, the last couple of days, Venus is going to conjunct Uranus in Taurus, which is your sixth house. And so this is gonna give you some exciting, uh, pleasurable, nice, uh, beautiful energy in terms of your work, health, and day-to-day -day routines. And so watch out for that at the end of the month. So that is what I'm seeing for you, Sagittarius. Let me know down below if you could see these things happening for you in the month ahead. Let me know how you're feeling about March and feel free to come back to this and watch this throughout the month if you need a reminder of what's going on. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. Alrighty, Capricorn Risings, this is your March 2023 horoscope. So March 2023 for you is really a month about exploring the magic, exploring the possibilities and the potential of what is around you, what is close to you, what is near you, your environment, the people that are around you, the places that are around you, your home life, like things that are close to home, right? Things that are close to you, things that are around you. So you're going to be a lot more focused on your day-to-day -day life and your surroundings and your environment, what's going on in your environment, like what's going on in the here and now, and not so focused outwardly or externally as much, right? It's going to be a kind of more of an internal time, but also that doesn't mean that you are not going to be feeling very creative because I think you will be with it being Pisces season and, you know, Pisces being your third house. You're definitely going to be feeling very creative and very interconnected. And, you know, you also may be using that creativity to express that to other people or express that online, you know, do different things online and things like that and get really into artistic pursuits or projects, etc., and learn new things and things like that. But you're also going to be very focused on your environment and your home life and your family. And so that is kind of the gist of March for you. But um, the first week of March, we really start off with the beautiful energy of Venus, Jupiter uh, coming into their conjunction and they're gonna be with Chiron and Aries in your fourth house. So this is gonna be like, you know, reconciling and transcending certain wounds, like expanding beyond certain wounds, seeing what's possible, um, and going beyond certain insecurities, certain wounds, like old past, you know, traumas or old past shit from, you know, your past or your childhood or wounds from your family. It's like, you're really seeing what you're capable, capable of beyond that, or even how you can heal some of these things or how some of these things that maybe you thought weren't so great about you can actually be very beneficial and so there's like a potential there that you're seeing um, in the beginning of the month with that or opportunities that arise or benefits that kind of you know can arise in terms of your home your family your personal life you know and situations involving that so we're also going to have mercury conjunct saturn in the very beginning of the month so this looks like some important news or an important decision or important real realizations or revelations or information coming in about your resources your finances and like a strategy for moving forward with those things and your priorities and things like that so and then on the seventh we have the big dog transit of your ruling planet capricorn saturn finally moving out of aquarius out of your second house of income money resources priorities finances and into your third house so for a while you've had to get very very serious the last few years and really really buckle down and get really responsible and strategic in terms of your money your income your resources your finances and really kind of have certain systems in place for those types of things, your assets, things like that. But now Saturn's finally moving out of that area. So it's gonna 
you know, brings, you're going to have some relief in that area moving forward. It's not going to be so heavy or tense or serious or uh, difficult even. And it's going to move into your third house of your environment, your surroundings and your lifestyle and, you know, your day to day places, people and things that you interact with and uh, learning, knowledge, siblings, neighbors, your city, your town, etc. So you're gonna start wanting to either, I could see this being like you wanna settle down more in one place or one environment, or that you may even start wanting to travel or get away or take short trips or something like that because it is still the sign of Pisces. But anyway, so that is like a brief description of Saturn moving into your third. I did a whole, you know, 2023 predictions video for each rising sign if you wanna go check that out. Uh, if you haven't seen that, if you want more information, on that but anyways we also are going to have from the 12th to the 14th mars squaring neptune so mars is going to be in your sixth house squaring neptune in your third house and so this could definitely bring up a lot of bullshit basically a lot of confusion or some challenges or tension or stress or you know kind of like even escapism from dealing with certain challenges or problems going on in the workplace or with coworkers, employees even health um, as well or certain task responsibilities or duties that you have on a day-to-day -day basis it's like you know if there's been something that you've been avoiding or escaping here because you've been you know living your best life or going and doing other things that you know you'd rather do or whatever if there's anything that you've been kind of escaping here that's going to come up again and you're going to have to face that and so this is kind of a time of cutting through the bullshit facing what needs to be faced being direct about what you need to be direct about but also like trusting and having faith in that and kind of putting yourself in the unknown and like allowing things to unfold the way that they're naturally supposed to and you do what you need to do like you own your part and do what you can and then leave the rest up to something higher than yourself right like you know just kind of trust and so this could bring up trust issues this could bring up you know challenges that you've been having with really taking care of something or really handling business in a certain area of your life especially to do with work and health and um, you know just day-to-day -day tasks and duties and you know environments and things like that it's like maybe you've been kind of escaping and focused more on a certain lifestyle or using a certain lifestyle to escape or using certain places or certain people or certain environments to kind of escape and not really facing something in your work or with day-to-day -day things that need to be handled or done, you know? And so this is kind of a time of you getting, you know, direct and facing that and facing that challenge while also trusting that it's gonna work out at the same time. And I mean, it looks pretty good for a lot of people because right after that, from the 15th to the 17th, we're gonna have the Sun, Mercury, and Neptune coming into their conjunction in your third house. So it's like a lot of realizations are had, a lot of, you know, reconciliation can be had a lot of a lot of things can start clicking and really making sense especially in terms of your environment especially in terms of your lifestyle especially in terms of you know what you want to talk about your creative flow uh, the places people and things that you want to be around the environments that you want to be around like this is definitely a time where it's like you're you're making sense of certain things and they can feel very magical it can feel a uh, like kind of spiritual mystical like there's just like a divine potentially like a divine intervention even kind of happening here where you are really starting to see something and like the fog is starting to clear right and so watch out for that time frame for that from the you know 15th to the 17th and then right around the 17th as well venus is going to square pluto so venus is in your fourth house and she's going to be squaring pluto from uh or to your first house and so this is definitely a time that could bring up a sense of conflict like what you want versus what a family member wants or what you want versus you know something going on with your living situation you know it's like there's kind of like like you know you may feel one way and someone else may feel another way or there may be some kind of tense situation that arises that like throws a wrench in your plan um for something right like that throws a wrench in your plan for what you want to do or what you wanted to do what you were kind of attracted to do with venus in your fourth squaring pluto in your first this could also bring up uh potentially a power struggle or 
you kind of being triggered or tested to act or react in a way that, you know, <laughs> that may be kind of above you, right? Like, and so it's kind of like, you know, being the bigger person, you could say, uh, in this situation, it's like, um, yeah, you could get kind of disrespectful or not, right? Like, and this could also be you kind of facing a fear though, um, as well in terms of home, family, or um, something like that. So that's something to, to watch out for. Things could get kind of intense, especially involving relationships within your family or family dynamics, um, et cetera, around the 17th. So the next big thing that we have happening this month is Pluto is moving into Aquarius. So Pluto is finally moving out of your sign for a few months, Capricorn, and giving us a glimpse of Pluto and Aquarius. So this is going to be your second house that it's moving into. So this is going to be a complete uh, kind of restructuring of your second house. You know what I mean? This is going to be a lot of changes and a lot of looking at power dynamics in terms of money, finances, resources, and assets, and, you know, uh, really changing the way that you view these things and look at these things um, over the next several years. But for the first few months of this year, it's just going to be a glimpse. So it's not going to be, you know, I mean, some things may happen or you may start noticing some themes, but overall, I think, you know, it's just going to be kind of a glimpse of what's to come since it's only going to be for a few months that it's in your second house. And so um, I did a whole separate video for, you know, 2023 and the rising signs and all of that for the big transits this year. So if you want to hear more, go watch that. Um, the next big thing that we have happening this month is Mars is moving into your seventh house and out of your sixth house. So there's been a lot of busyness, a lot of challenges, a lot of bullshit, a lot of stress, a lot of questions, a lot of feeling kind of back and forth on a lot of things to do with your work, your day-to-day -day tasks, your day-to-day -day routines, employees, projects, duties, responsibilities in your day-to-day -day life, etc. But now Mars is finally moving out of there and moving into your seventh house of relationships. So this is definitely going to be a time that is going to bring a lot of focus to your relationship life, to other people in your life and what they may need from you or what you may need from them, how to assert your needs or how they may need to assert their needs, things like this. So that's going to be a big topic from the 25th moving forward. Now, I'm not going to lie, it could also bring up some confrontation or some conflicts in terms of other people in your life, in terms of committed relationships or agreements that you have in your life. And um, But there's also going to be a lot of fast-paced, forward-moving energy in your relationships. So it is going to be like, there is going to be a large focus that begins to happen on your relationships for the next couple months. Um, so just kind of be aware of that. So the last few days of the month, um, we basically will have on the 28th, Mercury conjunct Jupiter and Aries in your fourth. So this looks like you are really bringing in a certain plan or certain goal, certain idea, um, or a certain sense of optimism down to reality and making a plan for it, especially in terms of your home life, your foundations, your family, what you want in terms of, you know, your home and um, things like that. So that is definitely something that is going to be really helpful on the 28th. And then the last couple days of the month, we're going to have Venus conjunct Uranus and Taurus, which is your fifth house, which is going to bring a lot of enthusiasm, excitement, and electricity and shifts in terms of what brings you pleasure, what you desire, what you love, like what you want, um, what interests you, like, you know, sexuality, romance, dating. And so this could definitely be a really cool time where some unique things come in or where you want to make a change or do something eccentric and different um, that is going to help you express yourself, but have fun at the same time or follow your heart or follow your passions or something. So that's going to be a really beautiful energy. So that is what I'm seeing this month for you, Capricorn. Let me know down below if these things sound like they would happen for you in the month of March. Like if you could see these things happening and let me know how you're feeling about March and come back and watch this throughout the month. Let me know if it ends up resonating. I'd love to hear your guys' feedback. And with that being said, we are going to move on to the next sign. Alrighty, Aquarius, big changes happening for you this month in the month of March. Let's get into it. So March 2023 is a huge mother effing month for you, Aquarius. We are having one of the big dog planets move out of your sign. And then we're 
we're going to have another one moving in your sign for a few months to give you a preview of what's to come with that. So it's going to be a, a very, very big, big shift this month. You're definitely going to be walking out of March feeling very different than you felt for the last several years. And so, um, which I think is going to be overall a positive thing, you know, for you because you've had Saturn in your sign for years now, you know, since 2020. And so you've had to really grow up. You've had to really mature. You've had to learn really hard lessons in terms of who you are and your place in the world and where you fit in and, you know, how you view yourself and taking accountability, taking responsibility. You've had to grow up. You've had to mature. You've had to face really difficult lessons in terms of what you're capable of and what you've had to endure and, you know, a lot of lessons and perseverance and, you know, things like that over the last several years. And so this is a time, you know, in March where that is finally coming to a culmination. It's like everything you've learned the last few years could really feel like they're coming to a head right now. And that heaviness is finally going to go away when Saturn moves out of your sign this month. And uh, I think that's going to be a relief, you know, even though Pluto is then moving into your sign, um, it's still going to be a different energy. You know, it's going to be a different energy and it's going to be very much about personal power and finding that power within yourself and who you are and, you know, making an impact and making powerful change in your life and potentially the lives of others as well. So let's go ahead and get into it, Aquarius. So on the first uh, few days of March, we're going to have Venus and Jupiter coming into their conjunction with Chiron uh, in your third house of communication and your environment. And so this could definitely be a time where you are, you know, realizing some big things or um you know, working on something creative involving communication or putting your ideas out there, putting, you know, your opinions out there, you know, really um, doing something creative with it. But also it's like very healing at the same time. It's like pushing you past your normal comfort zone or like showing you that you can do something. It's like almost expanding you past a certain level of insecurity or a certain wound that you've had for a long time. And when it comes to, you know, expressing yourself. And so this is really about, you know, self expression expression and being direct and, you know, like putting yourself out there and seeing the potential and seeing the optimism and, you know, seeing the possibilities and what you have to offer with your voice and, um, and within your environment as well, within your surroundings, you know? And so I feel like that's going to be something really positive happening. And not only that, but we also are going to have Mercury and Saturn conjunct in your sign while, while you are kind of having all of this, you know, culmination all of this, you know, all these full circle moments with everything that you've learned the last few years with Saturn, you're also like expressing that and showing that and making big decisions that, you know, and, and maybe taking accountability or owning your part in a really healthy and mature way that's going to help you grow as a person. And so this first week of March, I really see is like really, um, really developing your character in a lot of ways, you know, like it's very much like character development, very much like, you know, putting in this like beautiful, you know, structured energy in your life and helping you express yourself, right? It's really helping you um, speak about what you want, what you desire and what you need. And, you know, maybe even setting some boundaries, getting serious and having some serious conversations for your own betterment, right? So that's what I really see as we are entering into March for you. But then on the seventh, Saturn will then move into Pisces, which is your second house. So it's gonna finally move out of your sign, which is gonna be a relief for you, a relief for your identity, a relief for your personality, a relief for your body, <laughs> a relief for how like you feel as a person, and it's gonna move into your second house. So you're gonna start getting a lot more serious and uh, a lot more, you know, kind of focused on finances and resources and what you need and what helps support you as a person and how you can bring certain visions, certain dreams that you have here into physical matter, into reality, right? How you can structure this area of your life so it flows better, right? So it is more fulfilling and so it is more supportive for you. And so that is what I really see here is, you know, on the seventh as Saturn starts moving into your second. Now this is a long-term transit, so these may not be things that you notice right off the bat, but they're gonna be things that you notice as time goes on. So anyways, then from the 12th to the 14th, we are going to have Mars in Gemini, which is your fifth house, squaring Neptune in Pisces, which again is your second house. So this is a time where you have maybe been trying to kind of avoid certain things in terms of addressing certain things or facing certain challenges 
in terms of your passions, in terms of you know what you want to put out there to the world, your heart's desires, maybe your dating life, your intimacy life, your romantic life, even children, right? So this could be a time where there's been challenges in this area, but maybe you've been kind of neglecting them or avoiding them because of financial reasons or because of fears that you have financially or because of, you know, you know, you're just kind of like not really looking at them, right? Like, or priorities, right? So this could also be like, maybe you've been putting a lot of energy into having fun and stuff and you've been kind of ignoring what that's doing to your bank account. Or maybe you've been really wanting and like feeling very directed to, you know, like start some project or start some passion project or hobby or something, but you've um, been kind of like, not trusting in that, like that that's gonna be uh, financially doable for you or something like that, right? So it could go either way, but there's something here involving your income, your resources, your finances, your priorities versus your heart's desires, you know? Um, and that goes into dating, romance, hobbies, children, sexuality, intimacy, passions, you know, things like that, so interest. And so this is a time where these two could be kind of conflicting and maybe they've conflicted before over the last several months, um, but, this is a time where it's like, okay, I need to face this. I need to see what I'm running from, or I need to be direct about this. I need to face the challenge. I can't keep fearing it. I can't keep avoiding it. I can't keep putting it off. And so this is a time where it's like, you need to face it and be direct and you know take the action that you feel like you need to take while also trusting and kind of surrendering the outcome, right? Um, while also letting go of what you can't control about it, right? And like that's like the best way to kind of deal with this energy. So you're like having faith, but you're also taking action and the two aren't at odds, you know, because with the two at odds, it's like, oh, well, I don't have the data for this to work out. But then Neptune's like, well, you just got to trust. And then Mars and Gemini is like, well, that doesn't make sense to me, you know, like, so it's like this back and forth. But if you can just kind of try to do both, it could end very positively for you because right after that, from the 15th to the 17th, we're going to have the Sun, Mercury, and Neptune coming into a conjunction. So all of this is going to collide and start making a lot more sense in like the following days and it's going to lead to an awareness, a revelation, an awakening, a sense of you know inner knowing or transcendence or healing um, that happens here that really starts to like make sense on a lot of different levels and that to start that starts to even feel like magical or like you made the right decision or you did the right thing or you understand now in some way right and so it really can lead to like a very spiritual divine kind of moment for you of really kind of transcending certain things and realizing what you really do need or what really is the right, you know, what really is right for you in some way, shape or form or the abilities that you do really have or the, the innate gifts that you have within you, you know, something like that from the 15th to the 17th. So watch out for that time period because it's really powerful. And then also on top of that, we're going to have Venus square Pluto from like the 16th and 17th. And so this definitely could be a time though where you are kind of facing some fears in terms of what you really want to do or opinions that you really wanna express that may feel very subconscious or powerful or that you may try to hide. And so this is gonna be about really kind of facing that internal fear um, of that you have when it comes to doing what you love or doing what you wanna do or taking action on the things that you feel magnetically drawn to. So that is something that could come up around that time as well. So. Then on the 23rd is when we have big dog Pluto entering your sign Aquarius. And so this is gonna give us a glimpse just for the next few months of what's going to be coming in the following year. So it's only gonna be for a few months that it's gonna be in your sign this year. But um, you know this is gonna be very much about personal power, very much about you finding your power and the le like lessons that you go through to find that personal power that can be difficult at times, that can deal with like a shedding of who you once were or past versions of you while you embrace new versions of you, while you recreate yourself from the ashes, you know? This can definitely be a time where your views on who you are or the world or your life begin to really radically transform in big ways. And, you know, you start learning like, you know, what's your part and what is not your part? Like what's yours to take on? What's what your, you know, baggage is and what isn't, right? Like what, is, what you're accountable for and what you're not accountable for, right? 
And I think because you've already had Saturn moving through your sign the last few years that you've had a lot of help with that already. Saturn's like laid the groundwork for this, right? So now it's just really going through that metamorphosis process, that really that alchemical process, that deep change within where you feel like, oh my gosh, I'm meant for so much more or I have so much more power in me um, and things like that. So it's not all going to happen at once in these few months. It's just going to be kind of like a glimpse, like a little bit of you know, here and there, you're going to see some of these things. Um, I mean, for some people, you may start noticing big changes right away, especially if your ascendant is at zero degrees Aquarius, but it's probably not all going to happen right at once. You know, it's like something may happen, then a month or two later, something else may happen. You know what I mean? But you're really going to notice those Pluto themes in terms of yourself and in terms of your life, right? And you will crave depth a lot more in yourself and in your life. You will, from other people, you will you know, go into like, be really wanting to go past the superficial and um, be just so much more authentic, you know? And so I feel like that's gonna be something that you could really see come up too. So the other big thing this month is that Mars is gonna move into Cancer on the 25th. So it's gonna finally move out of your fifth house of Gemini where it's just been, you know, like a freaking ping pong ball in terms of your passions, your love life, your dating life, your children, your sex life, your path, like just all of it. Um, how you have fun, all of that. And it's going to move into your sixth house where you're going to get a lot more work oriented, work focused and health focused. Like you're going to really start wanting to focus a lot more on how you're feeling about work, how you're feeling about health, what you need in terms of your job, what you need in terms of health, um, things like that. You're going to be motivated and there's going to be a lot more energy focused on those areas of life. But this could also bring some turbulence or some conflict um, up in those areas of life as well. Like you may start having confrontations with coworkers a little bit more, dealing with like rude people at work a little bit more, um, things like that. And so it's gonna really kind of, you know, show you how to assert yourself, how to protect yourself in those areas. But yeah, so that's gonna go on the next couple months starting on the 25th. And then the last few days of the month, we have some really cool transits. We're gonna have Mercury and Jupiter conjunct in your third house around the 28th which is going to give you a lot of logical steps and plans and strategies for bringing in big picture things into your life, for learning something new, um, for bringing in like actual, bringing in actual change on like a more mundane level, like big change on a more mundane level with Jupiter and Mercury. It's like, you're gonna be making sense of a lot of different things around the end of the month. And it's like, you're gonna be able to apply those things to your day-to-day -day life to actually make a bigger change and go after the vision that you have or the goals that you have or the learning pursuits that you want to go after or even travel, um, things like that. So then Venus is going to conjunct Uranus right on the last couple days of the month and that is going to happen in your fourth house of home, family, and your personal life, your past. So this is going to be a beautiful time to like rearrange, shift things around. Maybe you're going to randomly be like, you know what, out with all this old furniture, in with new furniture furniture, like we're going shopping, screw this, like, or you know what, I'm fucking moving just like in a split second. You're like, I'm moving. I want to move into this new place. Like there's going to be some excitement and electricity that comes in, in terms of, you know, beauty and, uh, like, uh, pleasurable things in terms of your home, family, and personal life, right? And so that's going to be a really exciting time too, the last couple of days. So that is what I'm seeing for you guys, Aquarius, for this coming month of March, 2023. Let me know down below if you could see these things happening, if this was helpful, uh, if this ends up relating at all, definitely come back and let me know. Feel free to watch us throughout the month. Thank you guys so, so, so much for watching this video. I truly appreciate it. And I will see you guys in the next one.